Good afternoon. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment public hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx webinar, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting via their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When an item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Today, the Committee of Adjustment is offering attendees the option to appear by video. Those attendees that have registered in advance to attend by video will be temporarily upgraded to panelist when their item is being heard. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five-minute allocated speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be re reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with written submission deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist controls during a video present uh, appearance. The moderator will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of <coughs> the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning that apply to property permission to extend or to alter lawful non-conforming uses and consent to sever properties in order to create new laws. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name address and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and Toronto Local Appeal Body, TLAB, will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email only. You may not agree with the decision of the committee. Decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, TLAB, or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. I will call each item in the order that it is listed on the agenda. When an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if requested by the committee. When the committee does not require a presentation, Applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee 
for a decision. Each speaker, including the agent or applicant, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. And I will comment to you as you are approaching the five minute mark. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and may be asked to make a presentation to the committee on the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support of or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of speakers after they have finished their presentations. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut, but only to those issues that were raised by the speakers. And this will mark the end of discussion. The application will then be taken into committee for a decision. Are there any declarations of interest by panel or staff for items on this time slot? Hearing none, <coughs> Madam Deputy, Secretary Treasurer, have you received any requests for deferral? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and panel members. I uh, see none for this afternoon. Thank you. And further, Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer, are there any files to be closed? Through you, Mr. Chair, see none for this afternoon. Thank you. We go then to the first item on the afternoon's agenda, number 21. 151 Pacific Avenue. On this application before the committee are the materials submitted by the applicant at the time of submission. There are presentation materials also from the agent at 20, uh, on 24th of August. And there is a staff report from Urban Forestry. So I'll ask the agent, please, to join us by stating your name. Alex Axelrod, you're unmuted. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, we don't have agents on the line. I tried to contact him several times, but uh, wasn't successful. Okay, then. So, for panel and those watching, we're not able to establish contact with the agent at this time. So, I'm going to set number 21 aside. And, moderator, I'd ask you to continue, please, to attempt to connect. We'll set it aside and move on. We'll come back to that one at such time as you let me know that you've been able to uh, connect with, with the agent. Number 22 is 11 Yorkville Avenue. Here we have submitted materials. There's a cover letter from the agent. May 11. There's a cover letter from 
Who's Field Zinc? Hi, can you guys hear me? Good afternoon. Okay, um, state your name, please. Zach Watson. <coughs> Just stand by for a moment, please, Zach. Yep, good. And there's also a proposed new design map and diagram received May the 11th. Correct. So, Zach, good. Okay. Good to have you with us. Panel members, any uh, requests for a presentation on this application or questions to put to the agent? Mr. Clay. Uh, Chair, I think uh, just a quick one um, to the agent. Um, I, we can only presume that you've had discussions with city staff and and they're fine with this. This is just simply a, an increase in the height uh, for an additional story. Is that correct? That's correct. I've had discussions with, uh, with community planning. They had uh, no comments or opposition with the application. Um, just to be clear, we aren't proposing any overall increase in the height of the building. Uh, the roof slab main, it is consistently in the previous proposal and the current proposal 213 meters. The parapets are 215 meters and it's just the additional uh, second internal story above the one penthouse unit. Um, so that height increases. We're, we're proposing that height to be increased from 206 meters uh, to 208.96. Okay. I'm hearing no further questions, so let's take the application into committee for a motion, please. Mr. Nipfel, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, this is, um, despite the size of the building, this is a very small application. Um, the variance request is, in physical terms, imperceptible. No one would ever see the difference. Uh, I don't have any difficulty with it, and I'd like to move approval without any conditions. Thank you. That is seconded by Mr. Clay. Moved and seconded, therefore, to approve. Those in favor, please show hands. And that is a unanimous vote to carry the motion and to approve the application without condition. Thank you. On number 23, 42 Winifred Avenue, we're looking at submitted materials. There's a revised set of uh, site plans, floor plans and elevations. There's also a cover letter from the agent, 23 August. Internally, there are, there's correspondence from city planning, two pieces plus a staff report from Urban Forestry and also from TRCA. One letter received in interest or concern from 58 Caroline, Caroline Avenue from Blair Scorgi. So I'll ask the agent to join us, please. My name is Andrew Kells. State your name, please, Agent. My name is Andrew Kells. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Glad to have you with us. Good afternoon. Panel members, presentation request here, questions? Mr. Byte, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of quick ones, uh, um, particularly interested in i suppose there are two two different pieces one is um the, the planning planning uh, email addressing the balconies and screening of balconies and the other is um variance number four is that an existing condition or is there something triggering that particular one so essentially the uh existing conditions as is it does not meet the 25 percent uh minimum landscaping rear yard area. So our back and forth with uh, planning basically suggested if we implemented planters to increase the uh, landscape area as well as 
creating a space for storm management and uh, urban heat island effect, we could you know almost meet that threshold for the rear yard. As far as the uh, privacy screening go for those balconies, that was a condition planning uh, suggested to us and we have no objection to that. Perfect, thank you. Uh, question with also with respect to number four variants. Um, is there any room here at all to improve the deficiency of uh, of eight percent, where twenty five percent is is required? D well, there is, depending on uh, you know how we would go about the actual landscaping itself. Planters is definitely probably the best course of action. But as it stands right now, that 3.5 meters squared in the rear right-hand uh, portion of the site is the only soft landscaping. And anything else would mean remediation of that existing patio and uh, potentially uh, you know, pulling more of it up. OK. All right, any other questions, panel? Here. Oh, just Mr. Byatt first, Mr. Nipfel second. Uh, sorry, just a quick one. Uh, I'm just looking at, uh, I believe it's the site plan uh, on the revised plans. Just at the front, uh, it looks like you've got some brickwork indicated um, just ahead of the proposed uh, enclosed porch. Um, is that, um, is, what, what materials are you proposing to use there? Or is that going to be soft landscaping? Yes, yeah, so it's, uh, there's already an existing walkway leading up to the front porch that we are proposed to enclose. Um, and we're essentially going to maintain that existing uh, front landscaping. Is that landscaping, or what materials is it? Uh, it uh, you've got a sort of grid pattern there, but I'm not sure what, what that is. It's just demonstrating the difference between the, uh, the concrete sidewalk, the walkway, and the soft landscaping that is on the front. So it's more shrubs. Um, little patch of grass. So that would remain a soft landscape? Correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, then. Everyone's questions asked that wanted to oh, Mr. Niffel, go ahead. Uh, a very simple one, Mr. Chairman, uh, to the applicant. The uh, planning department condition suggests that you screen the, uh, the west edge of the third floor balcony, uh, which brings into question which north we're going to use. Um, the, the, that would be the project. If we were re to refer to the site plan on the right-hand side, would you consider, and the left-hand side, would you consider those to be east and west, or do you consider them to be north and south? We're north and south. Two, you consider them north and south. OK, so the planning department condition we need to change the direction on, right? Yeah, we we are we accept the uh, the recommendation from planning. Except so, however they, they want to, however they see fit on which direction that's facing, we will oblige. Okay, I I think they mean the two sides. So. I think okay, I thank agree. You very much. I think we're ready, therefore, to take this application into committee. Anyone have a motion in mind, Mr. Bike? Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'd like to move motion to approve uh, this application, which is fairly straightforward. Um, there's, there are a couple of conditions. One, of course, is forestry. Uh, number two, um, they, uh, I believe the, the other one is to do with the, uh, from planning with regard to screening or big screening. And I don't believe there's anything else. Okay. Is there a second to that motion, Mr. Nipfel? Mr. Chairman, I have a question first uh, to Mr. Byatt. The, the condition from planning we need to reword. It should be the, um, it should be the um, north. Uh, they're asking for the south face, not the east edge, the west edge. And I, I would also suggest that it be on the other side as well. So I would suggest to you a friendly amendment to screen both the north and the south edges of the third floor balcony and I just discussed that with the applicant so he actually understands what we're talking about because the directions 
are a little confusing. Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer, have you, uh, do you see what Mr. Nipple's getting at? Through you, Mr. Chair, yes. Okay. We've noted that. Okay, so we have that, we have that captured in the motion then. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to second it. Thank you. Excellent. Therefore, moved and seconded to approve. All in favor, please show of hands. Motion carried, and the application is approved. We'll go back now, I understand from the moderator, we do have the agent now for number 21 with us. So we'll go back to 21, 151 Pacific Avenue. And I'll ask the agent to join us, please, by stating your name. Uh, hi, my name is Peter Suttard, and my wife is here also, Alice Chu. Good afternoon. Okay. Panel on number 21. Any questions for the agent? Mr. Byatt? Just a quick one. Uh, this is a very straightforward application, and uh, I'm sure the uh, variances one and two are triggered by existing circumstances. I was just going to ask, uh, I note on your site plan that the planter, the existing planter box is going to be removed. Um, is it possible to replace it just ahead of the constructed, reconstructed front porch? Uh, yeah, if I heard you correct, you're talking about the planter box? Yes. Yes. Uh, our plan is indeed to fill that with uh, delicious cherry tomatoes once more. Wonderful. Thank you. Mr. Niffel? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the um, the ex existing condition, however, has the planter box going right to the edge of the porch rather than providing what looks like a walkway between the driveway and the porch. And the, and the walkway that's shown doesn't actually connect to the end of the stairs anyway. So is the proposal actually to reduce the amount of soft landscaping over the existing condition? Um. You'll have to forgive me. Um, we don't have a driveway. Uh, I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to answer you. Okay, sorry. If can can the can you see a site plan if we put it up? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you put the site? You see, I'm uh, sorry. It isn't the driveway. It's a walkway. My, a walkway, my apologies. Yeah. There's there's a connecting walkway between that walkway and. It, in front of the porch, and, and the existing condition doesn't have that walkway. As, as I see from, from Google Earth, the existing condition has a planning going right up to the porch. So are you decreasing the amount of soft landscaping in the front yard by adding that walkway? Um, there is, it's difficult to see, but there is an existing walkway that connects kind of the, that runs east to west all the way to the sidewalk. For real. Okay, I, it probably just doesn't show that. Okay, that's fine. That answers my question. Thank you. Further questions? If not, let's take it into committee. Mr. Byatt. Um, if there are no objections from my colleagues, I'd be quite happy to move the motion to approve. Um, I don't believe there are any uh, oh, there's a forestry one condition attached. Uh, beyond that, there's not, there are no other conditions. Very good. And that is seconded by Ms. Chan. It is moved and seconded to approve. Those in favor, please show hands. Thank you. Motion carried and application so approved. Sorry, through you, Mr. Chair, it's just come to my attention that item number 31, 76 Pine Crescent Road, will be requesting a deferral today. Thank you, Madam Deputy Secretary. Treasurer number 31, request to defer. Okay. Very good. We go... We, we jump back now to uh, item number 24. Twelve forty-seven Dundas Street West. Here we have submitted materials, two photographs, a report from city planning. 
correspondence in support, 1249, Dundas West. Also an eight signature petition supporting, 3742 Grove Ave, 262, 263, 265, 268 Dover Court. In opposition, there are two pieces of communication from uh, Gail Super and Eric Hubel dating back to August. Okay. Uh, moderator, do we have do we have uh, Gail Super standing by or not to speak? We do. Very good. Let's have the agent join us then. Good afternoon, uh, Edward Lee, um, the architect and agent uh, for the application. Very good. Edward, you have five minutes to present your application to the panel. Yes. Um, a straightforward application for a rear patio uh, to an existing um, eating establishment on Dundas Street West. Um, this rear yard is um, um, adjacent to a multi-story Abacus condo building. Um, and because of the orientation of the lot relative to the network of laneways uh, behind the property, um, the owners felt that it was a reasonable proposal to um, ask for permission for this to be used as a uh, rear patio uh, adjacent to residential lots. Um, we had a lot of uh, correspondence with planning staff um, on whether they would support this before moving ahead with the minor variance application. Um, and ultimately, uh, you know, it depended on obviously support from the immediate neighbors. Um, the tenants, um, the operators, grape witches, are beloved in the neighborhood and by the community. Um, a lot of the neighbors are actually patrons of theirs. Um, so it was no problem for, for the owners to get lots of support. Um, obviously, we had to reach out to the immediate neighbors directly to the south. Uh, the first, uh, the closest house to the rear patio at 54 uh, Grove uh, had no opposition. Uh, they did not sign the petition, but they uh, reassured us that they didn't have any concerns with our application. Um, and pretty much every house uh, within the 60 meter radius was contacted. Um, most of them just declined to support, but did not have any um, concerns. Uh, the one neighbor that did write in with concerns um, is 38 uh, Grove. Um, there are nine houses down the laneway um, which I estimated is in excess of 60 meters from the patio. Um, so we respect her concerns uh, in her letter, but uh, believe that her property is well beyond um, distance from the patio. Um, I think that the location of this patio, um, surrounded by garages, um, makes it actually less impactful on neighbors. Um, and obviously the uh, planning staff uh, recommend the typical um, operating conditions, which uh, we of course accept. Um, there were also work in um, communication with planning staff about privacy from the patio. Uh, and I was able to successfully demonstrate that um, views to and from the patio are limited to um, looking out across at the garages of the homes on Grove and that there are actually no sight lines uh, to and from the patio to anyone's uh, private home. Um, so that's one of the concerns I've been before committee several times for these rear patio applications and um, the distance, uh, the minor variance uh, that we're requesting 7.46 meters um, is to the lot line, but it's always important to consider what, por what part of the lot is actually um, within view um, of the patio. So planning staff um, didn't have any concerns from a privacy standpoint. Um, which is why the uh, standard conditions are the only conditions that they've included in their planning report. Um, and it's happy to answer any questions committee uh, may have. Mr. Nipple. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you were to clarify or uh, to accommodate the bylaws that currently exist, what would that uh, mean in terms of the size and the um, extent of the patio? Can you? With reference to the site plan, how big would it be? Uh, well, the requ requirement is 30 meters. So uh, you can see at the bottom right, the bubbled in 7.6 uh, meters. 
Uh, we aligned the 1.8 meter privacy fence with the back of the condo building. So directly adjacent to this patio is the loading dock, uh, sorry, the parking garage for the Abacus condo. Um, so it just seemed like a natural point to um, have the fence line. Um, so the 7.6 meters um, is to the portion of the residential lot uh, where parking um, is currently is. Um, and there's actually a garage um, in front of that parking area. So the actual views um, and sound that would actually um, impact an, the actual home at 54 Grove uh, would have to actually turn the corner and go down the laneway to actually um, you know, be heard or have views um, from the actual house. But, so to answer your question, um, you can, How I mean, just scaling off this. I'm trying to figure out whether you'd have any. I don't think we'd have any patio. Yeah. Um, I've yeah, been before committee. Right? Yeah, pretty much any. Uh, I mean, the zoning bylaw is written in a way that 30 meters was established as a setback from residential zone. Uh, obviously, downtown, I don't believe I've ever come before you for any patio that actually was feasible within 30 meters. Um, I do have a list of precedents, uh, some that I was actually the applicant for and others in the neighborhood uh, with a similar condition of a rear patio that abuts a lane. Um, and the setback is essentially the width of the lane. Uh, we've been able to set it back a little bit further um, just to align with the Abacus building, um, which does seem reasonable. And um, planning staff didn't have any concerns about the size of our patio. They were just more concerned about the uh, location and um, relationship to the lanes and the homes. And this is kind of an atypical laneway condition where we, we don't actually have a house directly below, behind it. It's, uh, it's a row of garages, um, which I think makes this proposal a little bit less impactful to uh, the residential neighbors. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bayan? Just a question. I'm just looking at uh, a Google map image of the, of the rear of this uh, property, the proposed property, and I can see the the line within which uh, we, we're going to be uh, having the back wall. Yeah. And of course, the rear wall that you have with a gate is 1.8 meters. Uh, would that be a, as tall as the garage wall on the... On the... Uh, that it would be tying into on the other side? Yeah. Um, it's probably comparable. I mean, 1.8 meters is a little low for a, um, for a garage for parking. It's probably closer to 2.1 meters. Um, next would door. It, would it make any difference to you if you raise the, the height of that uh, rear fence and gate? Um, I'm just thinking from the perspective of the, uh, the home that's adjacent to this laneway. Um, I don't think it'll have an impact on, on the side of the, the condo, of course, or the, the, yes. of the right. No, on the other side, because that's a commercial property. Yeah. Uh, but just to perhaps um, add a little uh, more to the barrier in terms of sound uh, to the neighbors at the back. Yes, I mean, I would uh, I would we would be absolutely fine with that. I, I would just be mindful. I'm not sure if 1.8 meters has been the standard uh, fence height requirement because of the fence bylaw. I'm not sure that proposing something higher would contravene the fence bylaw. But mm -hmm. if the committee of adjustment decision could overrule whatever fence bylaw would. Be applicable uh, we'd be more than happy to erect a taller fence yes i was just noting that the uh, the neighbor on just directly behind uh, has what looks like a really nice garden which presumably they use uh, a lovely trellis there and um, I, I would hope that you know they wouldn't have any uh, uh, there would be no impact on them from the from the sound of the patio let's so, go now to yeah, the uh, Let's go to the speaker that's standing by. And uh, moderator, let's have that speaker join us, please, by stating your name. Hello, my name is Gail Super. Um, I'm afraid this is the first time I've used WebEx, so I apologize if I should be doing something to show my video, but I am I am unable to figure that out. So thank you very much for allowing me to state my position. So this is a mixed use neighborhood, which is currently saturated with restaurants and bars. 
many of which have outdoor areas which already cause considerable noise. The patio of great witches, um, contrary to what the, um, the applicant has stated, is within earshot of my home. And I do know this because um, Great Witches has had um, events in their patio before. I'm not sure whether they received permission. And um, we could hear very clearly. So my home is on the west side of Grove Avenue. Um, and the patio and backyard area um, face west over Scale Lane. And um, as one of the councillors showed, um, there are a lot of beautiful backyard gardens. It is not just garages. The, gar the garages abut onto the gardens, and this is where we spend um, a large part of our time in the summer. Um, so noise from just talking can be very loud, especially when it is combined with people drinking. People who drink and talk tend to talk a bit more loudly. For example, on Saturday night, there was a just talking, no music um, party on a laneway off Rolyak, which is um, even further away. And um, I could hear, it was, it was quite clear, sound travels up and sideways. Um, furthermore, um, this isn't to do with noise, but it's to do with inconvenience related to uh, contractors who are dropping stuff off for um, Great Witches, uh, parking their motor vehicles at the top of Scale Lane. Um, and we are concerned that this is um, going to be exacerbated when it becomes a restaurant and it becomes, becomes bigger. Um, also, I just want to get to the petition of support. So Greg, which has uh, submitted a document titled Petition of Support, which is a bit misleading. Uh, Greg, which has attempted to solicit written support from residents in the neighborhood by knocking on people's doors, giving a brief explanation. Once the respondent indicated assent, they asked to sign a letter of support. So I witnessed this in regard to 37 Grove Avenue, which is the opposite house to me. So as an indication of how sound travels, I could actually, I was sitting on my front porch and I could hear the conversation. The Great Witches reps didn't mention the noise levels, didn't mention potential parking issues, and didn't mention the number of patrons that will now be accommodated in this new space. Um, in any event, this respondent's home is probably unaffected because she's on the east side of Grove Avenue and doesn't have a garden, um, you know, facing onto Scale Lane. The only other person on Grove Avenue who signed the petition is at 42. I spoke to him, he told me that he felt overwhelmed and unable to, so, to say no. He was similarly immediately asked to sign the letter and in fact was given a $25 gift card. He said he hadn't discussed it with his wife even. I later spoke to his I'll wife. I'll ask you please, I'll ask you please to, if you could, to focus on the, the, uh, the, the impact of this proposal potentially on your yes. property if it was to go ahead. Yes, okay, so um, I've, 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 made a, I've made mention about the noise, but I think well, it's important to look at the procedure as well. And the planner uh, or the applicant did um, refer to the extensive amount of support, and I'm actually disputing that there's an extensive amount of support, because if you look at this petition, it's only signed by eight people, two of which live on Grove. The rest of them live on um, Dover Court. One of the people who lives on, uh, and on Dover Court, there's the laneway housing. So there is also laneway housing on the opposite side of Scale I'll, Road. I'll ask you to, to I shall ask you please to um, address your comments to the impact of this proposal on, uh, okay, so, on your proposal. Right, so the impact of the proposal is that it is in fact going to affect the quality of my enjoyment of my property. It's very noisy. They've had parties before and I've heard them. Um, I have a work, space overlooking my garden. We, we always use the garden in the summer. And on top of it all, I don't feel that Great Witches has been completely transparent in saying that there is a whole lot of support because the only support that there is, it comes from Dover Court, which is far, far away. I'll ask you now for your, your I'll ask you now for your concluding yes. comments, please. That, that, um, well, my uh, two cents worth would be that, um, you, um, I would like to know um, whether it's possible to include uh, soundproofing because the privacy isn't a concern of mine, but it's the soundproofing that is basically. So 
I don't know whether a two meter fence is going to be is going to be soundproofing, but absolutely 100%. I invite you all to come and sit in my backyard on a summer's evening or to sit in my office during the day. I have no idea how many people Grape Witches is going to be having in the backyard. And your time is now up. Thank you. Thank you. Panel members, questions if you have them for this speaker, please. Okay. Let's return then to the agent who will have an opportunity now to respond in rebuttal. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, I mean, with all respect to uh, Dale Sofer and uh, her concerns, um, everyone's tolerance for noise in a downtown neighborhood is different. Um, I think it's important to point out that um, 38 Grove is nine houses down from the laneway. Um, if she can hear noise nine houses down, I'm sure there's a lot of other sounds in the neighborhood that she's displeased about. Um, um, grape witches have had events, um, you know, special occasion permits um, during pandemic, post pandemic, um, whatever they've needed to survive. Um, it's, it's obviously, I think uh, committee is sympathetic that restaurants have had a rough go and they're just trying to take advantage of the outdoor times and um, um, and obviously, I'm before committee quite often for these rear patios for that specific reason. Um, regarding um, the um, neighbors' uh, questioning of the or characterization of our kind of support, um, Grape Witches um, were since the beginning very upfront that they wanted to reach out to all the neighbors as early as possible. They were um, upfront. Of every, I mean, the business has been there for a while, so everybody knows them. Um, any of the neighbors who chose not to sign um, the letter of support. Um, some of them were people that had no concerns, but just chose not to want to put their name on paper, uh, which, which um, Great Witches owners obviously understood. And um, I told them to just reach out to everyone just as the, the, the notices are sent to everyone within 60 meters. And um, if anyone had any concerns, that was ultimately the goal of going door to door to hear about anybody's concerns, talk them out ahead of time. Um, so, you know, generally, I would say that uh, even though we don't have everyone's support on paper, um, we did reach out to everyone. And the fact that there's only one neighbor nine houses down that's actually submitted uh, correspondence okay. objecting, um, I think is telling that um, this is something that people who live, you know, within a block of Dundas Street West are um, realistic that, you know, there are there is a lot of life on Dundas. Dundas has gentrified tremendously in the last few years. Some hate it. Some um, think it's great for the for the city. Um, um, so, I mean, at the end of the okay. day, I mean, we're open to doing something. To Let's see if the panel has it's, questions for yeah, you. Sure. Panel members, any questions for the applicant? If there are none, then let's take the application into committee, moving toward a, uh, a decision, please. Mr. Clay, go ahead. Uh, sure, Chair, I'll, uh, I'll kick this one off. I um, um, This is a, a, a part of the city, a stretch of Dundas, which is, I think as the applicant noted, becoming um, increasingly um, um, vibrant uh, with the um, addition of new businesses and restaurants and bars and the like, uh, it's not surprising uh, that we are seeing small businesses looking to improve their operations and expand their operations. Um, uh, I, I, I think uh, that uh, the proposal is, is reasonable. They're not going back as far as the adjacent garage. They're only going back as far as the uh, uh, neighboring condo. And uh, I, I like Zaheer's um, thoughts about uh, increase in the fence. I do note that the bylaw states a minimum of uh, 1.8 meters. So uh, perhaps we can come up with some language that might increase it to uh, match the height of the uh, neighboring garage. I think that would be a, a, a reasonable um, accommodation. But again, this is a, you know, this is a, an area of the city that uh, we're trying to promote um, economic vibrancy and um, you know, amenities for uh, adjacent residents and, and others that want to visit this area. These are the kinds of uh, improvements that make those businesses even better. 
I think it's a supportable application, particularly given uh, the city's uh, three uh, conditions, which I think would help minimize um, sound uh, traveling in and around that area. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the applicant would be open to doing other sorts of things that might help sound attenuation. So I, I think it's a supportable application. Mr. Byatt, followed by Mr. Or by Ms. Chan, followed by Mr. Nipple. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I, just like Larry, I, I noted that the planning staff report talks up at least 1.8. Not uh, there's no restriction on the upper upper end of it. I think that would certainly help. Um, and the the other piece is, uh, you know, perhaps the applicant. Uh, may want to uh, apply some low-tech um, soundproofing or soundproofing materials uh, on the walls of this uh, particular patio so that the sound sound is absorbed uh, before it leaves. Um, but as Larry has pointed out, uh, you know, Dundas is a main thoroughfare with lots and lots of growing activity, especially at the commercial level. So I, I do believe it's a supportable one. Thank you. Ms. Chan. Uh, yes, I just want to uh, mention uh, the fence is 1.8 minimum. Yes, that's right. I think that the, why, why they're asking for a higher fence to the standard 1.5 mm -hmm. is that it's for acoustic uh, reason, I think. And also, I, the other way we can sort of uh, reduce the impact of the noise is uh, maybe using some stretched fabric as ceiling. That always cut the noise down. But this is only suggestion. Overall, I think that uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a supportive uh, proposal. Yeah. Thank you. And Mr. Nepal. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I, I'm going to be the odd man out on this. I think what we're doing is we're applying Band-Aids to a policy, and that isn't the way I think we do planning. Um, the bylaw here is clearly concerned about the impact of outdoor uh, restaurant space on the existing residential area and there are two provisions to safeguard it. One is a minimal size uh, or maximum size I should say for a patio and the other, other is the distance between that patio or use and the residential uh, area. I, the reason I asked the questions I did at the beginning is I wanted to know whether the patio could be reduced um, in compliance with the bylaw. I completely agree with the comments about um, this area being vital and having um, a lot of entertainment activities. I also support and agree with the fact that uh, restaurant uses have had a very rough time during COVID and I would like to assist them. However, I do think of the two bylaws, uh, the two um, performance standards in the bylaw, I'm not prepared to support the change to um, the size. I still think that 51.8 is a reasonable size patio and it would address many of the concerns that the planning department's condition is aimed at. So um, I will not be supporting the application as it currently is. Thank you. For my part, um, I, I do find it supportable for reasons already stated by my colleagues. Who's ready with the motion on this one? Mr. Clay, go ahead. Sure, I'm happy to move a motion, uh, Chair. Uh, and I do uh, acknowledge Carl's uh, perspective. It's an important one. Um, but um, I, I think in this instance, uh, I, I, I think it's a supportable one given the context of the surrounding area, particularly. Um, I would like to move approval subject to uh, planning's conditions contained in their memo dated August 17th. And also just to amend uh, condition number three, or maybe just as a condition of our own, um, that the rear fence um, be constructed to a height uh, which matches the garage to the west. Very good. I don't know what the height of that is, so we'll just leave it like that. Yep. S through Very you, Mr. Chair, um, we may be we want to, we may want to be mindful about amending that condition and perhaps leaving it as measuring at least 1.8 meters in height um, as stated by the community planning staff. Are, are, are there fence standards here that we're not familiar with perhaps? That's a situation. Um, there could also be a situation what happens if the garage gets demolished. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Well, I think uh, I, I'm comforted by the fact that notwithstanding that, uh, that's a good point, Sabrina, but uh, I think the agent had indicated that they would be prepared to do that. So maybe if we just leave it uh, as it is and we'll assume that the agent will do um, that accordingly. So you're gonna, yes, we're going to yeah. leave it at 1.8? Sure. Okay. I think it says at least 1.8. Okay. Very good, very good. Ms. Chan? Are you seconding? It is moved and seconded, therefore, to approve. Those in favor, please, show of hands. Those opposed. And the record should show that Mr. Nipple is in dissent. The motion is carried, and the, uh, the application is approved. Thank you very much. And we move on to number 25, 137, Collier Street. On 137 Collier, before us are submitted materials, cover letter from the agent, August, email correspondence from city planning, and support correspondence from 88 Asquith and 76 Asquith. So I'll ask the agent, join us please by stating your name. Hello, it's Merton Randall, the agent for the owner. Very good. You're with the panel now. Okay. Um, panel members, questions for the agent? Presentation? Questions, I think, Ms. Ch Chan, go ahead. Yeah, just one small question. Is the uh, third floor terrace uh, existing condition? There, there is an existing terrace off the third floor, yes. Um, and I think staff are scrolling down to the plans. If you look at the existing floor plans of the third, yeah, you see it there. And um, it's being enlarged and there's a 1.8 meter high privacy screen on all sides of it, which is also shown in the, the elevations of the proposed. I see the, the, those, um, the, it's not glass screen as shown on this drawing, right? No, if, if, if staff scroll down uh, a couple of more drawings, you'll see the, the, the yeah, staff, there, there's the existing terrace. You can see it sort of, their mouse is circling it. We scroll down to the, um, the last, yeah, this shows the, the terrace with the 1.8 meter high privacy screen on all sides. So how much bigger is this terrace from the uh, existing one? The terrace um, extends two feet nine inches to the side beyond the, the existing limits. Okay. Basically okay. lines up uh, with the rear, the rear wall of the house. Okay, okay. thank you. You over you you overlook Church Street. The rear overlooks Church Street, right? Yes. Yeah. So there's no one there's no one directly behind this house. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a pretty urban location. If you've driven down Church there, it's as the plan shows there, it's in the bend. So you're looking at multi-story office buildings. Yeah, yeah, and it's a pretty busy stretch of Church, right? Right. Thanks. Okay. I think we're ready then to take this application into committee. And who's ready? Anyone with a motion? Mr. Byatt. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think this is a, a most easily supportable uh, application. I have no concerns at all. Um, I don't believe uh, there are um, any conditions attached. Um, from what I saw in the planning email, they have no concerns. Um, so I'm quite uh, happy to move uh, acceptance of this approval of the application without any conditions. Thank you. Seconded by Mr. Nipfel. Mr. Chairman, could I ask uh, uh, Mr. Zard a, a question? Um, the privacy screen that is proposed, we need to clarify, we need to solidify that, I would argue. We either need a condition or we need to tie it to plans. I agree. Uh, I think we can tie it to plan. 
Okay. Please elevation. Yeah. Through you, Mr. Chair, then that would be Plan A505 as well as A506, and that shows the right. side and rear elevation plan. Perfect. Thank you. And happy to second that, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, who was that speaking? That was Carl. Mr. Niffel? Okay. Moved yeah. and seconded, therefore, to approve. Those in favor, please show hands. And that is a unanimous vote. Motions carried, the applications approved. Panel advances to number 26, 47 Rosedale Road, where we are looking at um, submitted materials, cover letter from the agent, cover letter and planning rationale from the agent 22 August, and previous Committee of Adjustment decisions dating back to 01 and 02. There is a report from TRCA and three form letters in support, 49 Rosedale and 73 and 83 Crescent Road. Okay, we'll have, uh, or we shall ask the agent to join us, please. Betsy Williamson, you've been unmuted. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, Betsy Williamson, architect and agent for the owners at 47 Rosedale. Good afternoon. Okay, panel, we have the agent with us now. Any request for a presentation? Any questions for the agent? I'm not hearing any questions, nor is there a request for a presentation. Okay, I'll, I'll just ask the agent then, agent, is there any important thing we should know, you know, single important thing that we should know about your application? Uh, thank you. I think it's fairly straightforward. Uh, we're taking all the lines off the existing heritage home and uh, carrying them through uh, on the addition in the rear yard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's take this one into, uh, into committee then for a, a decision. Mr. Nipple, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, this is a very nice application, and I'd like to compliment the applicant on a really, really good um, analysis of the planning rationale. It was very helpful. The, there's an addition at the back of the house, which um, very closely um, almost lines up with the properties on either side, very close to that. And there's a roof going over an existing parking uh, space in the front yard. I believe that those revisions are consistent with the character of the area. They don't impose, as far as I can see, any negative implications to neighbors or anyone else. I think it's, um, I think it's an excellent submission um, and it's, and it's a, a proposal that's uh, worthy of, of support. So I'd like to move approval of the application and without condition. Thank you very much. Does that have a second? I'm sorry, did I miss that? Is there a second? It is seconded, Mr. Byam. Moved and seconded to approve. All in favor, please show hands. Motion is carried and uh, the application is approved. Number 27 is 20 Russet Avenue. We are looking at submitted materials, cover letter agent, arborist report, present mata present, present, presentation materials from the agent, August. There is a letter from Councillor uh, Anna Bailau, 16th of August. There is support um, from 
18 russet and 9 russet. Okay. Agent for this application, please join us by stating your name. Hello, I. this is Nicholas DiCenza, agent for 20 Russet. I can't hear you at the moment. We hear you very clearly. You're good. Um, do you hear me? Yes. Good. Okay, I think you should be okay then. Panel members, any questions for Mr. DiCenza? Mr. Bai, go ahead. Um, I just noted there were, I think you've got balconies overlooking the garden, if I'm not mistaken, between the house and the laneway suite, proposed laneway suite. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, if there are any um, concerns about privacy for neighbors on either side. There, <clears throat> there was a concern by um, uh, number 24 and 26 to the north, uh, and that's why these drawings have been updated to reflect uh, uh, relocation of the bal balcony towards the south property line, um, and a privacy wall, a two meter high privacy wall will be stated on the property line uh, on the south side. So the neighbors to the happier, uh, to the north are happy, and the neighbors to the south will have this privacy wall. Uh, thank you, I just noted that on the presentation. <laughs> Good, thank you kindly. And uh, the, I believe we do need to uh, address the wording, just to get started on this one, the wording in the purpose section of uh, the application. I think the wording needs to be changed a little bit to reflect the situation properly. And uh, there's only one balcony on the south side, isn't that correct? Correct. One balcony facing the laneway side had been removed. So the wording should be changed. East facing balcony only. East facing balcony only. With with second story east. Second story east balcony. Yeah. Correct. So we could, we could just take out the words and west and change balconies to balcony. Yeah. It's completely so. Through you, Mr. Chair, we've noted that. Thank you. Okay, good. Panel members, any uh, further questions for agent? Not hearing any, let's go into committee on this one then. Mr. Clay? Uh, sure, uh, Chair. I'd, uh, I think this is a, a really nice design for a laneway suite. I'd like to just uh, acknowledge and compliment the agent or the owners uh, for uh, doing exactly what we kind of hope happens in these situations where there is a concern by neighbors. They sit down and they hammer out a satisfactory arrangement, which I think they've achieved in this case. So good on you guys. Uh, I think it's a, uh, an attractive design. Uh, the variances before us are comparatively uh, minor. It's pretty close to being as of right, uh, and it's in a good location. So I think it's a supportable application. Uh, I'm prepared to move um, uh, approval of this application, the amended application, I guess, uh, to take into consideration the change in wording of the purpose. Thank you. Second to Mr. Byatt. It is therefore Mr. moved. Clay, would, you, would, would you consider a friendly amendment to tie it to plans because the plans indicate the privacy wall off of the balcony? Oh, fair, sure, fair enough. Tie it to plans, good. Good point, okay. It is therefore moved and seconded to approve the amended application or the amended motion. Those in favor, please. Show of hands. And the motion, the amended motion is carried. The application is approved. Thank you. Number 28, 206, Rosemary. Panelists viewing the submitted materials. An arborist report that comes with a tree protection plan and a cover letter from the agent, August 24th. 
we have email correspondence from transportation. And we do have opposition correspondence from 210 Rosemary from Mr. Joseph Palazzi. So let's have the agent join us. Please state your name. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Richard Lee Brack. I'm the architect for the, uh, sorry, agent for the owner this afternoon. Thank you. Okay, so panel, um, there is there is no one registered in opposition here. So if you have, does anyone require or would anyone like a presentation? No. Anyone have questions for the agent? Mr. Byatt, go. Uh, yes, please. Just uh, I wonder if the agent could just speak to um, variances uh, 10 and 11 with regard to landscaping. W what, what's triggering these? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, the owner wanted to retain the existing driveway configuration and in so doing, um, it triggered uh, these variances. So the existing situation, uh, there's a configuration, you know, if, you can, if you can sort of check out the, uh, the site plan, um, this is the result of keeping that configuration. That is paving to the north boundary and uh, within the existing driveway. Uh, if I may just ask a question, uh, given that this is going to be a new build, uh, we have the opportunity to maximize uh, landscaping, especially for drainage purposes. Is any thought uh, given to how this um, may be mitigated in, in, and so increase the landscaping uh, requirements? Actually, forgive me, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I meant to um, amend the variances to eliminate the need for variances 10 and 11. Let's Do not go. require those variances any longer. Okay, Through most important, let's just slow down for a moment. We'll backtrack. Oh, sorry about that, okay. No, the, that, that's very important. And so we're gonna backtrack and uh, make sure that staff have captured this and that uh, we're all looking at the same the same application. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Through you, Mr. Chair, staff have captured the okay. removal of variance number 10 and variance number 11. Okay, so it's now a, a revised application. Okay. Uh, Chair? Yes. Uh, uh, quick question. So um, in looking at the variances, the ones that I think stick out mostly for me are the length and depth. Um, uh, I'm going to assume that part of the reason it's longer and deeper is because of the covered terrace at the rear. Is that correct? Are you addressing me? Um, yes, yes, the question is to you, applicant. Yes, uh, thanks. No, actually, no. Um, the, there's uh, some variances for some uh, living space underground, which are obviously not influencing uh, anything above ground. Um, and another <laughs> one... Uh, for length it refers to the length of, or sorry, the depth of the building. If you refer to um, variance number four, um, I just wanna call your attention to the configuration of the plan such that the actual depth when measured from the required front yard setback to the main rear wall is 20.07. The requirement is 19. Where we're getting the extra length is in that um, if you can, I don't know if you have access to the ground floor plan, that is a uh, breakfast room. So for a portion of the first floor plan, uh, let's go down a bit, please. There is the additional uh, 2.34 meters. Uh, one more down, please. Uh, sorry, yes. There's a, uh, a city, like a breakfast room at the back. So there's an additional 2.34 meters, which refers to that uh, projection only. Uh, so really, we have, but the overall depth is 22.41. It is measured to that, and it is underneath the overhang. But the overhang is not included in the measurement, no. So depth, uh, I get the depth. So length is also rather long. Is that attributed to the same reason? Yes. Well, so length, is measured, length is measured from the front face, which is 
for, is a uh, variance for us. We're a little bit further uh, to the front, from the very front to the fr very rear. Um, that's, that is the math, yes. So if you added in the covered terrace, the length would be even yes. greater. How, yeah. uh, how, how deep is the covered terrace? An additional 3.5 meters. Uh, um, have you discussed this with both of the adjacent neighbors? I noticed that um, I didn't see any correspondence from them. Yes, thank you for asking. Actually, we did meet, uh, sorry, we did correspond with both neighbors. Uh, the neighbor to the south was pleased that the house was being, the, the, uh, our south wall was being located uh, further away than the current uh, distance to the property. And the north neighbor did have some concerns, yes, indeed. And actually asked us to prepare a shadow study, which we did do. We met with them online and presented it, and they were quite pleased with the results of that. There's a, a lot of growth um, between the two properties. And so this design does not contribute any more than the existing growth of some high trees and so on between the properties. And we were able to show in our uh, sun study that we do not have any further deleterious effects that bother them or of concern to them. So in that regard, yes, we did meet with them um, and uh, they were, they did want us to check into that. We did do that. And for that reason, they do not have any objection to this proposal. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bias? Just uh, again, similarly, um, with regard to the length, and you mentioned it's, uh, there's, an ex there's a below ground extension. Is that the portion that's under the, what's on, I think on one of the plans, it's indicating as the eating room? So the area, so the way that, um, the bylaw requires to measure length is to everything connected to the house above or below grade. And so, yes, that additional length of 26 meters is below ground. It's not. Um, it's and not it's not the full, sorry to interrupt. Uh, it's not the full width of the house. It's only that portion that's under the um, breakfast area, eating area, is that? Um, can I call your attention to the elevations? I think it would be helpful. Uh, the, the last two drawings. You can see the way that the house is, is masked here. Um, just while I'm at it, I just wanted to state to it. Uh, at the front, you can see, um, let's say, no, not that elevation. The next one, please. Next one. Is it A3.4? Yeah, it's a little it's a little difficult to view sideways. I, I apologize. <laughs> that's one of them. Yeah, that's right. So you can see that, oh, are you able to rotate it? That'd be really great. Yeah, I've got it on my screen as well. That's perfect. Yeah, sure. So you can see at the front, the house is sort of uh, wedding caked. It, it, the second floor is set back. The third, right. floor, the third floor is set back further with a traditional slope roof. And at the back, uh, whoop, there we go. Um, and, and, and the back is also sloped from, from the first, second, and third floors. What you're seeing are uh, modesty walls there's a hatched modesty wall and a further modesty wall on the third floor to their hatchback. But you can see the relationship of the covered porch to the area below ground. Great, thank you very, very much. Further questions? Mr. Nipfel, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could you tell me the surface of the existing driveway? I, I'm surprised that it doesn't require a a variance, but you're you're actually really close to the bylaw. I'm just wondering what the material is. The material of the existing driveway is, is yeah. I, believe, I believe it's an interlocking brick. Is it? Do you know if it's porous? Is it the sort of thing that will absorb moisture? Well, um, I don't really know if it absorbs moisture, but I I I no longer require those variances. I don't know if that's what you're asking, but the existing paving is, is sloped to the street. It sort of slopes up. Yeah, no, the only reason I was, I, even, even though um, if the landscape, if you don't have a landscape uh, a variance requirement, we, we would prefer that most paving be, um, be porous so that uh, it doesn't create water. I just wanted to know what the surface there was. So you yeah, said it's an interlocking. 
Yeah, I, I think the I think the owner would be um, amenable to that if if you wanted to put a condition saying that notwithstanding that we don't have a, a, a front yard landscaping variance, I don't know if, if you can recommend, um, but we would be we'd be happy to look at a uh, permeable paving scenario there. I don't think they would have a problem with that. Thank you, Jeremy. Oh, and can I ask you one other question? Um, sure. The sure. balcony on the third floor and the balcony on the second floor both have modesty walls, which we should capture in any approval of this application. Uh, we can do it either with words or by tying an application approval to the plans. I'd be inclined in this case to tie it to the plans. Do you have any difficulty with that? No, I don't. I don't. I accept that. That would be fine. Thank you. Very good. Let's take this application then into committee and move toward the decision. Anyone ready with a motion? Mr. Nipfel, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to Mr. Clay's point, this is a very deep um, building, uh, but I think it's been designed in a way that tries to uh, overcome any kind of difficulties that that might uh, generate. Uh, it's stepped like a wedding cake in both directions. Um, there's been concern for privacy with uh, what the applicant referred to as modesty walls, which is the protrusion of an existing wall out to provide for privacy um, screening. Uh, I, I think that um, the proposal is, is in many ways commendable, notwithstanding the fact that it's, um, it's very long. Uh, I, I think he's done a good job in, in fitting it into its context. I'd like to move approval of the application subject to tying the approval to plans and to the front driveway being um, in uh, permeable papers. As amended. As amended, yes, sorry. As amended, yes. Mr. Clay, you seconding? Mr. Clay is seconding. It is therefore moved and seconded to approve the revised application as described by Mr. Nipple. All those in favor, please, show up hands. That vote is unanimous. The motion's carried, and the application is so approved. Thank you. Panel moves forward on number 2946 McMurray. The only materials here are those submitted at the time of application. We'll ask the agent please to join us. Enriquez, I'm the uh, agent for this application. Mr. Enriquez, yes, I think we, we missed the start of your name. It's Tony? Tony Henriquez, yes, sorry. I think I was just muted as I started to speak. Very good, you're with us now. Okay. Um, just stand by for a moment. Moderator, do we have a speaker standing by here? Through you, Mr. Thomas Chair. Uh, he's not on the line. I tried to con contact him, but he wasn't You weren't successful. able to, okay. Very good. So there, there is no one then standing by to speak in opposition. That person was standing by in concern. So we don't require a presentation panel, but anyone like a presentation? Otherwise, questions for the applicant? Mr. Clay, followed by Mr. Nipfel. Thanks, Chair. Um, usually in situations like this, when uh, a SEMI is putting a, a new third story or second story on, um, we often like to see whether uh, the adjacent SEMI has been spoken with or consulted with and in this case have you had any discussions with the owner of the adjacent uh, semi uh, yes we have we actually spoke to them before we created the design and uh, we actually even got their uh, party wall agreement signed before i even started the design so they are in agreement with it okay mr Hiffle, you had a question 
I did, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I had two questions. The first one was the same one as Larry. The second one has to do in a situation like this where you've got a consistent building form and you're adding a, uh, an addition to the top, it, it's a little, it can be a little awkward and out of place, the addition. Um, in many cases like this, the planning department has uh, negotiated a change to have the third floor set back somewhat from the front face of the building so that it isn't quite as imposing. Is that something you would be prepared to consider? Um, I, I would prefer if it went straight up, uh, uh, mostly because of uh, the, the adjacent building on the north, which is uh, still much higher than what we're proposing, and it would kind of follow in line. Uh, the, the building number 50, which is adjacent on the north side, that that building, uh, the actual, it's a three-story building, and the second floor is probably about uh, a good four feet higher than than our second floor, which means that our third floor will still be at least four four feet lower than that building. So we are next to a pretty tall building, and the building next to that building is just as high. Yeah, that wasn't my issue. My issue was more the fit of the third floor with the existing building that you're attached to. Um, and, and I appreciate what you're saying. There are taller buildings next door, but I, I have a concern with the third floor proposal that you have before us because I think it's out of keeping with the character of the two buildings. Uh, if, if you look at the site plan, you'll notice that the building uh, on the north side, it, uh, it jogs forward uh, probably a good 12 feet forward already. So we're already uh, 12 feet behind the building next door. I think my friend's talking about the, the fit with the adjacent semi and, and the, the look. That's correct. I, I, I mean, if we have to set back, I mean, we can accommodate that. Okay. Um, other questions, pal? I'm not hearing any. So uh, let's let's take this one into committee for I think some discussion. Um, I see what Mr. Nipfel is getting at, and I, I just wonder how we would how we would uh, do that. So, Ms. Uh, Ms. Chan, go ahead, please. I had the same question, uh, just to say that to set back, but I do not think that we can just do it right here and know how much setback mm -hmm. and uh, almost doing a, a redesign. Um, so I, I don't know whether we can do that, but the uh, proposed as it is, I think I can support it because uh, because they said that the other semi is in agreement, first of all, and what they have they're asking. I, I think that they they are quite reasonable, so I can support this uh, application. You can support as it stands, Mr. Clay? Yeah, uh, I think I agree with that. I, I totally get where Carl's coming from. Um, my concern would be is amending these plans on the fly or, and, and also consistency because I think if we uh, as a committee um, do this in this instance, then we would almost have to do it in every instance because it's the same argument. So uh, I'm not sure, I, and, and in this case, it's context. I, I, I agree that this, the adjacent semi is okay and that other building on the other side is, is quite large and looming. So I don't think this will stand out uh, in a way, for example, where there was a series of row houses and it would be the only one on that street that would project uh, that high. So I, I, I get what you're saying, Carl. I, I just, I'm not sure that's a, that's a, that's a hill I want to drive down right now. Uh, Carl, Carl how, how would you propose doing that in the course of this, this decision? What, what should happen? Uh, I, I agree with, I agree with the M's comment. I certainly wouldn't want to propose to redesign this on the fly. And I think that would be totally inappropriate. Um, when we've had this in the past, I've been on panels where we've had exactly this in the past. Um, the applications have been deferred for the applicant to um, to reconsider the third floor. And in most cases, 
Um, the recommendation has come from the planning department. Uh, I believe I have real trouble with this and I believe my position is consistent with what planning has normally recommended in these conditions. So I just to clarify, I'm not suggesting that we come up with some arbitrary number to set the third floor back. I think the only way that this could be accommodated is a deferral and a redesign of the third floor. Um, but I, like him, don't want to just pick a number and say set it back. But I, I can't support it as it is. I think it's really intrusive. Okay. Is there here any any comments? Oh, uh, I, I again uh, very much uh, in concert with uh, him and Larry. I think it's hard to to ask the uh, applicant at this point to go back to the drawing board, and I don't know if that's my place in for me, speech or speaking for myself, to suggest that they go back to the drawing board. Uh, as Larry pointed out, this house is set back a fair bit from the street front. Uh, the one neighbor to the one side is the, the structure is quite imposing, so I don't think this particular design will will uh, uh, detract from from uh, anybody's uh, level of comfort, if you like, um, streetscape wise. So I'm quite happy to to move uh, forward with this motion as is. I don't believe there were any conditions other than our discussion. Okay, for my point, um, I would like to have seen that third story, sa same area, simply move back, um, e even move back a meter or a meter and a half from the front. I think it would have been actually quite attractive. There would have been room for a, a front uh, balcony or something there, perhaps. But I, uh, oh yeah, I, I would, I would, have, I would have preferred to have seen it move back. Um, by about a meter or a meter and a half. Okay, who's ready with a motion? Yim, go ahead. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm seconding the motion. So oh, I'm sorry. I don't know that we have a motion yet. We don't quite have a motion unless I, <laughs> unless I missed it. Was there a motion by you, Mr. Byatt? Uh, not quite, but I'm happy okay. to move one if, uh, <laughs> and if uh, you will second. That's fine. I'd like to move a yeah, motion. I'm seconding that. Yeah. Um, and I don't believe there are any conditions attached if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Motion to approve Mr. Byatt seconded Ms. Chan. It is therefore moved and seconded to approve. Those in favor, please show hands. Those opposed, please show of hands. And let the record show that Mr. Nipfel and Mr. Mullock were in dissent. Um, the motion carries and the application is so approved. And with that, panel moves along to uh, number 30, 87 Logan Ave. We've got the submitted materials, we've got presentation materials from 24th of August, agent. There's a variety of decisions that relate to properties on Logan, Carlaw, and Morse. There is a staff report from Urban Forestry and one from TRCA. In support, there is a 10, there are 10 form letters signed by owners and occupants of addresses on Morse and Logan. Very good. Okay. And on this application, we have one person registered in opposition. Is that person standing by, moderator? Yes, okay. So let's bring the agent into the hearing, please. Hello? Good afternoon. State your name, yes, please. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Leo Mastandre. I'm the agent for the owners at 87 Logan. Leo, you have uh, five minutes to present your application to the panel. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so um, we've been dealing with um, Toronto Region Conservation, and they are now um, in so well, they have no objections to our application. Um, we're okay with um, forestry's uh, conditions, and planning did not have any concerns regarding this application. 
I did um, submit uh, 10 support letters, one from the adjacent neighbor at um, 89, and um, I submitted some photos and some decisions that are similar to what we're asking for. And um, I believe this does meet the four tests. And if you have any questions, I can answer them. Well, Mr. Byatt. Um, uh, sorry, just a quick question with regard to the terrace. Um, is any screening proposed? I'm just trying to see if there's any on, on the plans. I'm trying to see if there's anything indicated. I know it's not been required, but I think it might be wise to do that. Um, or, no, uh, but I am in agreement to put screening on the uh, on the sides. Yes. Okay, good. Let's go on to the person standing by the registered speaker. Hi, my name is Matthew. I am uh, current the current uh, resident of 85 Logan, and um, I just wanted to Matthew, ask, Matthew, um, I'm, Matthew, excuse yeah. me for interrupting. Would you mind, please, stating your full name? Oh, Matthew, yeah. Very good. Okay. Go ahead, please. Uh, like I said, I am the current resident of 85 Logan. Um, I just had a quick question. Uh, when we were presented with the information, um, it was the application and in terms of the uh, architectural and site plans. Um, I know obviously at this time during the application process, maybe not all tie-in details um, have been developed or, or um, um, maybe not all engineering had been finalized. The only concerns is that um, my wife and I um, have our the, the snowdrift potential due to the additional um, um, the additional uh, third floor, as well as um, the just uh, the engineering required for the underpinning of the um, of the for the addition of the extension on the kitchen, and um, thirdly the like you said the. Neighboring houses that do are three stories high do have privacy screens, and in listening to a couple of the applica other applications that have gone through during this hearing, um, it is not, it is something that um, I wanted to just flag. I don't think that's a big a big concern, but uh, I wanted like to have it noted anyways. Very good. Questions panel for this speaker. Matthew, do you see any, any other impacts from this proposal that you're concerned about? Um, none, none. I believe the existing structure has um, has um, just the uh, the impacting our shared wall. That's that's it. Um, but I think that's something that we'll still have to review and 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 have sign off on. But I, again, again, with only the elevations and, and floor plans I haven't really been uh, seen too much other drawings at, at this time I'm sure they're they're well on their way though okay thank you all right then let's return to the agent who will have a chance to respond Hello, you're back with us. Go ahead. Um, so when, when we submit for permit, we will ensure that um, the party wall will be um, addressed as well as the underpinning, and we will talk to the neighbors to make sure that uh, they're okay with what we're uh, proposing. Very good. There's also, uh, I think, a question about snow drift. I'm not too sure how the snow drift will work, um, but if there's something we can do during um, the permit process, we will ensure that um, that 
also addressed. Panel members, any questions for the agent? Mr. Nipple, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Leo, the, the speaker, Matthew, I think it was at 85, seemed to indicate that he was unclear about some aspects of the drawings. I'm wondering if you might share with him um, a copy of the drawings of the building that you have before us. Yes, sure, no problem. If there are no further questions for the agent, then let's take this application into committee. And move toward a motion, please. Mr. Byatt, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I, I just want to thank uh, the agent as well. Um, the, as far as I can see, this is a, a fairly uh, straightforward application. There's not uh, much in the way of uh, anything that one might disagree with. Um, there are, there's a forestry number two condition attached. And uh, as uh, the agent had indicated, on the third floor terrace or balcony, um, we would require uh, screening, uh, privacy screening on both the east and west sides. I'd be happy with uh, moving that motion. Approval. Very good. Is there a second to that? It is I wonder, second. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I believe it's on the it's on the north and south side. North and south. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Thank you. So north and south. I beg you, I've got my directions wrong. Okay. North and south. Thank you. Very good. Ms. Chan, are you seconding? You are. It is therefore moved and seconded. To so approve. Those in favor, show of hands, please. Unanimous vote to carry the motion. The application is approved. On number 31, we have a request to defer. So we'll have the agent join us, please, to uh, let us know what the plan is. What the thought is on deferral. I'm the agent for uh, 76 Pinecrest Avenue. Yes, tell us please why you would like to defer the application. Yes, um, I, this is a property that backs onto a ravine uh, handled by RNFP, not by uh, TRCA. Uh, Ravines has some concerns about the project, so we're happy to work with them. And in fact, we have a phone call booked for tomorrow uh, with staff. And also a few letters have come in from neighbors. And basically, I can see solutions to everyone's concerns, and we just need a little time to work that out. Okay, so the plan would be to confer with neighbors and see what what things you might do to uh, mitigate concerns. Correct. Okay. Panel members, there's the reasoning. Um, it's up to you to decide on this request to defer. Ms. Chan, go ahead. Yes, I think the deferral is also uh, so that they can uh, address the urban forestry uh, 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 discussions. They want to work with the urban forestry. Yeah. That's correct. So move for, uh, move for uh, deferral. Very good. That they, yeah. It is seconded by Mr. Byatt. Moved and seconded, therefore, to defer. All in favor? Sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, was there anybody on the line in concern that we needed to just talk to? Thank you, Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer. Let's just check on that. If there is, I'm sorry. I'm just checking now. Pardon me. Okay. So, we do have speakers registered. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Secretary. Okay, panel. Um, I do need to backtrack. So I'll ask you to hold, um, we're gonna hold that, our consideration there, our vote, backtrack to speak to the, uh, are there one or two moderators? There's one person on the line. We'll ask that person to join us, please, stating your name. My name is Dan Wright. Good, good afternoon, Dan. Dan, um, I'm, I, first of all, I apologize to you. I know you've probably been standing by here to speak for some time. There is a request here by the applicant 
to defer the application. The applicant has uh, indicated that they are aware of there being concerns by neighbors and want to address those. So that's the kind of thinking that uh, drives the request to defer. Um, how would you feel about this? The, the panel will decide, but we want to we know. Do, would you rather see the application go ahead and heard now? Or would you uh, be satisfied and comfortable with the deferral to allow for con uh, consultation? I am pleased with the applicant's request for deferral. Uh, we had requested deferral, and it is wonderful that they are now open to that. And if you'll permit me 10 more seconds, I would just like to thank each of, of you and also the staff, city staff supporting this committee. Uh, yes, I, my partner and I have been um, listening for the last uh, hour or two, and we are just so impressed with um, everyone's contribution um, as engaged citizens to help Toronto be a high functioning, highly livable city. Uh, and uh, in our little tiny, corner of it, I think deferral uh, would be terrific and would encourage the committee to do that. Dan, thank you for your, uh, your uh, comment there. We appreciate it. We really do. And uh, so we shall now return to the committee. And um, that speaker is very happy to see the application deferred. So let's go back. Ms. Chan. Thank you for those comments. Uh, yes. Make us happy for sure. And then I would like to move <laughs> deferral uh, with the mentioned reasons. All right, we're, we're going back now to uh, to in the committee to come up with a motion. Is there a motion on this application? It is. Ms. Chan, go ahead. I thought I already. Yeah, uh, the motion to defer. Thank you. So that they can yeah, make more uh, consultation and also work with the urban forestry. Very good. Seconded. It is seconded, Mr. Byatt. It is therefore moved and seconded to defer. All in favor, please show hands. And there's a unanimous vote to carry that motion. The application is deferred. Number 32 is 63 Beaconsfield Avenue. On 63 Beaconsfield, materials before us include those submitted at application time, plus presentation material from the agent, 2nd of August. There's correspondence in support from 65 Beaconsfield, and also a nine signature petition supporting from owners and occupants at 54, 55, 56, 57, 59, 61, and 65. Beaconsfield. Okay. Okay, now. So, um, Let's have the agent join us. Please just state your name. Uh, good afternoon, committee members. My name is Bart Soki, and I'm the architect and agent for the owners of 63 Beaconsfield. Good afternoon. Okay, panel members, any, uh, any requests here for a presentation? Or questions for the architect? Mr. Nippo, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we have amongst the... Uh, the uh, information that's been provided by neighbors, a request from 60, or a comment from number 65 saying they were concerned, but they'd withdraw their application um, because you've agreed to increase the privacy uh, the privacy screen to 1.8 meters. If we were to go to the 
the proposed third floor plan, is it just on just the slatted area that's shown in the drawing or what is the screening on the rest of the deck? Uh, we did uh, submit some additional plans to uh, indicate that uh, uh, that higher screen, yes. The, the I may have missed that. Just a second. I've got that here as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got on the additional plans, it's just pretty well the same, is it? A.07? Yes. Uh, so what it indicates in, you know, on the plans and elevations is that, is that the, uh, the screen between 63 and 65 is raised to uh, 1.8 meters. And what about the rest of it? The rest of it's lower, right? The, the rest of it is lower, yes. How, how high is the rest of the screening? Uh, the rest of it is uh, uh, the uh, 1070, you know, 1.07 um, uh, meters, uh, to, you know, as a code minimum for, for guards. We normally, um, on, on decks, and this is a pretty substantial deck, um, we normally suggest a 1.5 meter um, permanent screen that, uh, on decks like this. So I guess what I'm getting at is, on your third floor, does it make sense to have 1.5 meters for all but the section that you've got um, scripted as privacy screening in that area, 1.8 meters? Uh, the, uh, I could see uh, going to 1.5 meters on the, what would be the south side in this elevation, the, you know, the, uh, the, the plane closest to us. Um, yeah. On the on the east side to the to the laneway, I uh, I think we would prefer to keep it at the height that it's uh, currently shown in the drawings. So if we were to, in order to try and capture this in any decision, um, we would say a 1.5 meter screen on the south side, and then uh, unless we call up all of your plans, would we then say that the private screen on the north side is 1.8 meters? That's correct. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none. Let's take the application into committee for a motion. Ms. Chan, go ahead. I just want to uh, have one comment. I, I, I do not... Uh, although there's only one variance in front of us, and it's got nothing to do with the rooftop terrace, and which I don't think I can support. The reason is that it's a very narrow site, and it's, uh, it's also they got a, a, that almost like houses that were close to each other. And I do not think that it is a consistent feature uh, for in this area, especially on this street. So I, I, I will not like to support that. Okay. Sorry, can I just get some clarity? Liam, you, you're, you're uncomfortable because of the length? No, it's the rooftop. Only oh, just, the, the you size. Don't... Yeah, the, uh, it is a very narrow uh, lot. So it, it, you've got houses very close to each other. And I think that the size of the rooftop uh, uh, terrace is just too much. And I do not think that it is a, a common feature on the street. Um, I just do not. I, I I mean I can. It's kind of weird because um, they only have one variance, so which I do not uh, think that is a uh, uh, a big deal. But um, but, but it we is can't. Like, um, yes, so, the rooftop terrace is a bit too big for me. But it. But we we don't have a variance dealing with that before us, though, right? Yes. So, so it's you're... kind of weird. So I I as the design, I do not think that. I can support it unless they remove the or reduce the size of the rooftop. Well, you know that that would relate to your to your uh, view of the desirability of the application. So uh, I think that's I think that's, I think it's a legitimate position. No, I, I'm just trying to understand it, Chair. I, I, so you you're not supporting the application as a whole. Yeah, because what it is is uh, the the roof terrace to me it is a big part of the design. Actually, it stands out to me that it, uh, um, 
but uh, it's not part of the uh, require any variances. So in order to not to support the design, I have to so okay. the, uh, turn turn down the application. No, it's a legitimate point, Chair. Could I just? Um, I think this is, you know, you may raises a good point. Could we just ask the applicant? Are there any other rooftop terraces in the, the nearby vicinity? Or Kate third Rose. floor terraces, I guess. Hello, applicant. Is the applicant unmuted? Okay. Yes, can you hear me now? We do. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, uh, yeah, numbers at number 65, immediately to the north, the adjacent neighbor to the north, uh, there's a rooftop terrace. Uh, it's not as long, uh, as deep, but it's, uh, but there's a rooftop terrace at the, at the third floor. Okay. All right. Okay, we, we are back in, in committee now, so, um, is anyone ready with a motion for or against on this application? Mr. Nipple, yes, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I appreciate Yim's concern, but I don't actually see that it is in any way related to the variance. I don't think the variance causes the condition or contributes to the condition. Um, so I, and, and I actually don't have the same difficulty that that Yim is with the with the deck. I think that there's been um, through negotiations with the with the neighbors. Uh, there's been an attempt to provide for privacy, and on that basis, I I would be prepared and, and happy to move approval of the application, subject to there being a 1.5 meter privacy screen on the south and a 1.8 meter privacy screen on the north of the third floor deck. The only concern I have is I don't know. If a 1.8 meter screen is um, fine under the under the fence bylaw, but that could be an issue that uh, perhaps can be covered later. Okay, Mr. Clay, you're seconding. Yeah, I, I would just, but just for the comment, just to follow on from Carl's point. I mean, uh, I, I get the the concern. Uh, this was a case, I think, as well uh, as Carl pointed out that. Um, very extensive consultation with neighbors and and that uh, given you know people's angst about uh, third story balconies and rooftop balconies i think that was a commendable thing and the fact that they've got um uh, almost all surrounding neighbors on board i think uh, speaks to the fact that it will not have a negative impact so I'll, i'm happy to second that one it is therefore moved and seconded to approve those in favor please show of hands those opposed? Let the record show, please, that Ms. Chen is in dissent. The motion is carried. The application is approved. And we move along, advancing to item number 33, 214 Fairview Avenue, on which application we have before us. The submitted materials, two photographs, and support correspondence from 210 Fairview and 216 Fairview. We'll ask the applicant to join us. Please just state your name. Hello, my name is Stephen Adeo. I'm the agent for the, the homeowners at 214 Fairview. Hello there, good afternoon. Okay, panel members, Questions for the agent. Mr. Rodeo, I'll ask you, is there any particular thing about your application? If you just had one thing to tell us that we should that we should know about your application. Uh, I think the application is in line with the, the community and the neighboring uh, homes, um, and I, I think um, it's a fair application. Okay, th thank you for that. I'm not hearing any questions from my panel colleagues. 
And that being the case, I'll, uh, I think we can take the application into committee, moving toward a decision. Ms. Chen? I think this is a very straightforward uh, application, and then the three variants uh, minor in nature, and I do not think there are there any uh, contingencies that will move for approval. Thank you. Would you consider a friendly amendment, Yim, to include the uh, tying the approval to the elevation drawings? And the reason for that is I think the success of the project is largely dependent on the way the applicant has um, configured the roof with sloped sides, which reduces the visual impact. Okay, sure, yeah. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Okay. That's included. Is it the front elevation? I just say the elevations because you need the, it's front end and back and side. So if you said the elevations, it would cover the roof form. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Mr. Nipfel, are you seconding as well? Sure, I'd be happy to. So it is therefore moved and seconded to approve. Those in favor, please show hands. And that is a unanimous vote, which serves to carry the motion and to approve the application. And with that panel, we, uh, we complete this s chunk of the agenda. Um, Mr. We're gonna take Mr. a 10 Chairman? minute. Mr. Chair, yeah. I just like to uh, declare conflict of interest for item 43 in the next session. Okay, I'm gonna, we're, we're gonna recess now. We're gonna come back. If I forget, maybe 43 you've declared uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I'm a very good friend of the other semi. Of the, yeah. Number forty-three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Let, let's at this stage then uh, take a ten-minute recess. We'll return at four forty on number thirty-four. Thank you.
We resume. And we go, go back now. Uh, return to the hearing on item number 34. 74 Roxburgh Street. Here we are looking at those materials submitted by the applicant. Five photographs of trees on the property. A 2001 committee decision relating to the property. There's a staff report from Urban Forestry and another from Transportation Services. Okay. We'll have the agent join us now. Please state your name. Hello? Hello. State your name, please. My name is Kelvin Lowe. I'm the architect and agent for these applications. Good afternoon. You have five minutes now, Kelvin, to present your application to the panel. Go sure. ahead. Okay. So my name is Kelvin Lowe. I'm from KCCL Architects and representing on behalf of the property owner of 74 Roxborough Street West. I'm here before you ask for zoning relief of five requirements as stated in the notice. And we want to be transparent and forthcoming of this project status. The proposed garage is already built and city has issued an order to comply to this property since last year. The homeowner has been deeply regret of what happened and did not realize by simply replacing the existing garage that had been existing since mid 1980s that is falling apart with the same footprint required a building permit. Once they have understood of what we city require of them to do, they have been proactively trying to resolve the issue. They have caused over the years. If you look at the site plan, the existing shed is to remain and it has been grandfathered. And the new proposed garage facade is aligning with the existing shed front facade. This is the exact same condition as what they have previously with the existing garage. The proposed garage will not alter the existing landscape because the new garage facade is at the same location when compared to the existing. When compared to the neighbor garage, we are approximately one feet closer to the lane and it is the same condition as the previous existing garage. The proposed garage is having a smaller footprint to the existing garage. And in summary, I just want to state again, the homeowner is deeply required of what, the, what they did not obtain a building permit before construction. The, sim, they simply thought that replacing the existing garage does not require a permit. Second, the proposed garage is in the exact same location as what existing garage is previous at. That has been exist since mid 1980s. And number three, the new garage that was built is smaller in footprint when compared to the existing garage. And if the committee deemed the proposed garage is too close to the lane, and we, ha and we have to set back the proposed garage from the existing garage location, the shed will still remain at this location, and this might create our condition. And lastly, uh, we understand that the committee decision will not be affected even the proposed structure is already built, but we just want to be transparent and forthcoming of what had happened over the past year. And if the committee choose to refuse this ac application today, we just want to kindly seek for deferral instead, if possible. And we believe that what we have proposed does fit within the four tests of the committee guidelines. If anyone have questions, please let me know and I will be happy to answer them. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you guys. Pardon me. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll have qu we do have questions for you. Um, first, Mr. Byatt, then Mr. Nipple, then Ms. Chan. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you, you've mentioned that um, you, you, you've, in, your, in your explanation, you talked about a proposed new garage. Am I to understand that it's already built, so it's not proposed? Or is it to be built? Um, I think in the city point of view, it's a proposed garage, but they built it without a building permit. So it's already built. Uh, that 
is what happened currently. We just want to be uh, straight so it's, it's an existing structure. And on your site plan, there's a very dark black outline. Yeah. That's the old garage and the, the uh, dashed line inside it's got, uh, um, a two diagonal lines. That's the one that's been built. Am I correct? Uh, uh, I'm just so, trying to read this. Uh, let me clarify that. So the, the, the thick black line mm -hmm. is showing the proposed garage, but, oh. it's, but it's actually replacing the existing garage in smaller footprint. And the dotted line is showing the parking space that we require for review during the building permit applications. So we just showed up there's a parking space inside it. Good, thank you. Okay, just uh, st staff, would you mind, um, staff, could, could you zero in on the rear of the property here in the garage and uh, and blow that up a bit? Yeah, that, 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 that's helpful. Okay. Because I think the, the garage issue is one that uh, we're going to need some attention to. Very good. Okay, next uh, question, Mr. Nipple. Go ahead, please. Then Ms. Chen. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, just to clarify to the applicant, it isn't a proposed garage. Uh, we should refer to it as the existing garage. It isn't proposed in anybody's, anybody's book. So we've got an existing garage. The problem is that we've got a request for from the Transportation Department to turn this application down. Um, and it's a very serious um, concern that they have. Have you had any conversations with the Transportation Department? No, not at the moment, because we found out the comment the day before. Um, so we're gonna, we couldn't have a chance to talk to them. But I just want to um, uh, clarify that on the Linkscape, almost everybody is on the same facade, same line as we do. We just a little bit protruding out about one feet when, compa when compared to neighbor. But the transportation command is asking us to have 2.5 meters instead, which nobody have that requirement on the, like nobody meet that requirement with, on the lane. Well, I'm looking at this drawing now in the garage, the, the, the garage to the south appears to be set back, you know, by a substantial amount. Um, so if, if you don't mind, I, I would like it. So on, if I'm directly looking at, at the garage from the lingway on the left side, which is not showing on the site plan because it's not showing on the survey, but it's, we are about one feet further out from them. And then on the other side, you see on the site plan, we are plus one feet six further out from them. And that is, the existing shed is where where his grandfather is not being touched, and you you stay where it is right now. Okay, J staff, could you go back to the photographs, the, that photograph of the garage? That might be interesting. Um, is is that? Oh, that's not the garage. It's the deck. Any photographs of the garage? There's five photographs yeah. with this application. Any that relate to the garage? There's a, there's a photograph with the pool, Mr. Chairman, and the the garage is behind it. Uh, just as a suggestion, um, if you if if you have access to Google Maps, you can actually get into the laneway and behind, and I think it gives you a um, a better perspective of what the agent is trying to explain about the garage to its immediate left. Okay, well let's just take a moment and pull that up, and uh, and then we'll go on. Uh, Ms. Chan, I think, has the next question, but we'll get, we'll pull that up first if possible. Yeah, there it is. Uh, no, <laughs> just behind you. Just to the left. <coughs> you had it. You were so close. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the other side of the laneway. Yeah, just, yeah, there, right there. 
So there's the subject property there. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Left yeah. or right? Uh, uh, right where the, where the car is parked. It looks like this is an old one, but uh, and the garage has since been uh, built around where that car is. Okay, that's a, that's a 2020 photograph by the look of it. Okay. Yeah, so you can see the garage that the applicant was referring to to the left. It similarly protrudes, but then if you go along the laneway, you'll see most of the garages are set back. Yeah. Quite so. Okay, good. Um, that's a good place to remain, uh, John. Uh, as we go ahead with this. Ms. Chen, your question, please. Actually, my question is the same as Kyle's, except that I'd like to, after, uh, I'd like to point out to the report, the staff report, you know, mention that uh, the 2.5 setback from the center of the lane is actually is a requirement for all new construction because we have all these laneway houses proposed Thing. And I think the city's policy is to, whenever they can, is to ask for the extra uh, width or extra, extra length, uh, for, for uh, extra width of the laneway. And I think it's an important uh, point. It's not that uh, the other garage, the existing garage are all, uh, uh, do not meet the requirement. But the new one, you, you're building a new garage, you are required to have the 2.5 meter setback. Uh, can I respond to that comment? Go ahead, please. Okay, so let's say today we set back the garage like, after the, the decision is made, but then the existing shed is still remain. So I I, I, I think it, it will, I understand the, the requirement I, and how the city planning going forward, but in for this particular, particular property and this phase, I, I think it is more beneficial to have everything aligned, and then you create a unified uh, frontage. But if we do decide to have the garage set back, the existing shed you still remain as is at its position. Uh, the intention is good, but I I don't think it will help the situation uh, in my opinion. But I understand the point of view of it. I I, I do respect that, and thank you. Okay, I'm here. Why can't this shed be set back as well? He, yeah. here's, here's a comment that needs to enter the conversation at this stage. So, Committee of Adjustment um, sometimes is asked to uh, look at applications that involve things that have already been built. So, when that happens, what we have to do is to look at them from a particular point of view. We're not a punitive organization, um, but we do have to look at the application and ask ourselves, if this had not been built, if this was still a proposal on paper, then applying our four tests, would we have approved it or would we have rejected it? That's what we have to do looking at your garage because you have brought your garage before the panel. and. Uh, and so we have to ask ourselves, if it wasn't built, would we approve it? Would we approve what you're asking for? Or would we feel obliged by the four test to refuse it? Any Understood. further questions, Mr. Clay? Chair, can I, I have a, a couple of questions? So, um, so just looking at the configuration of your lot, is, are you unable to push your garage back to meet the setback requirements because of the location of the pool in your backyard? That, that's correct. So Okay, so, so I get that. So I get why you probably built it there. But why are you, wouldn't you be able to flip the driveway or the garage to the side of the yard where the shed is now uh, and have your shed where the garage is now and both those structures could be set back appropriately from the laneway. Is that uh, not something that's technically feasible? So in the homeowner position, we they will try to have the existing shed and existing deck to remain. So they don't want to remove what is there currently in good condition. So if we have to shift it around just like what we, what we just mentioned, then they have to remove the existing shed and then 
the existing tag that was there that was in good condition I, for them I think it is it will be financially not feasible well your alternatives aren't that great because if uh, staff is recommending um, refusal of this then you have to tear down your garage anyway understand so, so I, I mean a solution might be to reconfigure this so that you do get a garage and you still have a, a shed you just invert them or reverse them and you come back for approval y yes uh but the situation i understand committee have no do not we uh look at the structure is built or not if that's the case what what happened here is everything have to be removed and then we build and, and that will have a cost implication to the homeowner and I understand i do respect that the, the committee should look at this application when it's built, but unfortunately, it's not the situation. Okay, I think we understand your position on that. So, are there any further questions now of the applicant about elements of of the uh, application? Ms. Chan? Are we in committee now? We are not in committee yet. We're, we're about to go into committee unless there are further questions. So if there are no further questions, Yes, we are now in committee, and uh, yes. you can begin discussions if you would like, Ms. Chen. Okay, I think that it is sort of a tough situation, and I, I and 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 I, I also troubled by the uh, staff report that it doesn't seem to have any alternative or, or compromise. It seems that they they definitely want to uh, the two point five setback, and I. And that overall, the city policy is to widen this lane ways so that it can maybe more suitable for the further development of having uh, lane way houses. So I almost think that maybe we should defer this so that the applicant can discuss with transportation more, so we can have uh, some other suggestion by the transportation. Okay, Mr. Nipple. Mr. Chairman, I don't think we need another suggestion from transportation. They consistently ask for this condition. It's a reasonable condition. The garage should not have been built. As you indicated to the applicant, we are to look at these as if they were not built. And if this was not built, I would definitely refuse the application. I think what Mr. Clay was trying to do, um, and I was doing exactly the same thing, is trying to find a solution to meet the transportation request or requirement um, and still allow for the garage and the and the storage shed. And I think flipping the two elements makes all the sense in the world. As it now stands, I don't think there's an alternative uh, that's reasonable, and I, I will be voting against the application. Okay, we're in committee, so can I ask you, Mr. Clay or Mr. Niffle, will you be voting against the entire application or just a variance that relates to the garage distance from center line? That's variance uh, number two. Um, Experience number that's two. The, um, that's the only concern that I have. The uh, sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. I don't um, know if you can separate them. Sorry, Sabrina. Yeah, no, I was just going to say before uh, the committee makes a decision, I believe there's a um, resident in opposition that's on the phone line that we haven't heard from just as yet, right? My apologies. So okay. we'll have to, my, I, I my mean, if, if, if the committee was considering to defer, then we would have to still speak to that person to let them know about the deferral, but. Thank you, Madam Deputy sure. Secretary Treasurer. My apology to the person standing by. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Are you able to hear me? We hear you clearly. You have five minutes to address your concerns to the committee, and we I apologize to you for uh, going ahead. So go ahead, please, now. Uh, Ms. Barbet, okay. you can start your video. Thank you very much. So when you had the Google uh, lane, I have a two-car garage, and one half of my garage uh, is directly in front of uh, the storage shed, the shed that uh, projects into the laneway. Um, so my garage is the green, and then the storage shed is directly in front of my second garage door. Just a moment, please. Uh, Hold it there while we identify your garage, because this is important. So 
Um, are we close to your garage here now yes. with the photograph? Yes, that's it there. And okay. it's, so it's the second door, which looks directly at the storage shed. Okay, thank you. Okay, so my concerns um, uh, is about the 2.5 meter minimum setback requirement. And, uh, you know, the difference, so everything is lining up with that storage shed, but the storage shed, if everything is lined up, the difference between the 2.5 and the noted 1.67 is, is about 2.7 feet. So you can see how narrow it is. And in fact, it's probably the narrowest part of the entire laneway from um, uh, Molson down to Young Street. I can't park my car in that second garage. I have to park in the other because the setback of the uh, garage that's in front of my first garage door allows me to get in and out. I can't park on the other side because the turning radius is too small. Um, so that's a concern for me. And so I guess my concern was if they were going to add a door on, then it would be next to impossible. Um, there, it's worse in winter because there's nowhere to put the snow. It, it becomes a much smaller space. Um, so I already have a problem with the fact that I don't know how that storage shed was allowed to project so far into the laneway. Um, you know, and I, I'm worried in the future if I try and sell that somebody's going to look at that and go, well, we're, how are we going to use the second garage? Only my son with a little mini is able to park in there. Um, and the garage, be, the house beside it, number 93, has been sold and is closing today. And I don't think those new owners uh, will have had the opportunity to look at whether or not this is going to be an issue. So I thank you for that consideration. My only other concern is there are several renovations and reconstructions taking place on McPherson and Roxborough that impact on the laneway. And, if, and this precedent would be a problem of narrowing the laneway access and accessibility for other homeowners. Thank you very much for hearing my concerns. Please stand by. Thank you very much. Other questions for this speaker from anyone? Okay, so... Um, this, this actually, being able to see the laneway here is very helpful. And as I look down that string of garages on the right-hand side, um, is, is, it, is your lane, your garage appears to be properly set back. Do you, do you happen to know whether or not it is? Yes, it is. It's in line with everyone else. Uh, the, the beige door, or the beige garage that you see beside mine, um, projects about a foot past my door. Yeah. My garage doors are in line with everybody else. Right. Any other questions? No? Thank you very much, Speaker. Okay. Thank you. Let's go back now. So the applicant has a chance now to uh, respond to what this speaker has said. Let's go back to the applicant. Applicant, this speaker is saying they, one of their garages is already so difficult of access because of your shed that they, uh, they don't bother using it. This is your chance to respond. So I just, uh, in my response for today, even the application refused uh, or, or deferred, uh, the shed will still remain because what we are asking for proposal is for the garage. I understand you, you're still related to, to the to landscape, but uh, to, the, uh, to the person who is speaking, that shed was still in, in its place and location. And just in case, before you got, uh, the committee make that decision, we if it happen to be defer, uh, reviews, can we ask for deferral instead? If I understand you, you are suggesting that now that we have heard the application and are almost to a decision, you'd like to maybe defer. Uh, if the, yeah, if the okay. committee decide to well, uh, we use these applications. It, 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 is, it is actually, um, the, the committee may decide to do that, but yeah, it, it's a long way into the application process now to make that suggestion. So just leave that alone for the time okay. being. Panel members, any further questions for the applicant? Mr. Byatt, go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a couple of observations. One is that uh, just because the shed appears to have been placed where it is incorrectly, relative to the standards required today doesn't uh, then uh, suggest that 
another structure should he, should match something that uh, perhaps um, uh, doesn't meet the requirements of today. The other question that I do have for the applicant is that you're asking for a deferral. My question would be, if you had a deferral, what would you do with it? If we have not, then it depends on the decision. Uh, if, you're, if the decision is approved everything else except the setback, then the homeowner, then there's no choice to have to alter the existing garage design, which, which is unfortunate. But if that's the um, decision, then we, I think we all should respect that. Okay. My, so, not... Sorry, my sense would be that if you refuse the application, that includes basically it's the setback that's preventing it, isn't it? Oh, sorry, can you repeat that uh, uh, statement again? Sorry about that. Yeah, so if, I mean, we either, yeah, assuming we re refuse the, uh, the, the setback uh, variance or, mm. or no. refuse the entire application, uh, you'd still have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what yes, to do next. I, I, either or we still have to go back to the drawing board, okay. so that's why. Uh, okay. will, let's take this, excuse me, applicant, um, let's take this application now into committee um, for discussion. And uh, I'm just going to lead off a little bit because I was, I, I've since re-examined the, the purpose of the, uh, of the application. Of course, the application is about a garage. So we can't start, we, we have to pretty much accept it all or, or refuse it. Um, Ms. So having said that, I, I, just from my point of view, deferral doesn't make much sense because um, it's already built and it's there. You can't, you can't discuss that with the neighbors. This is a fact that is on the ground. So other comments, please, Ms. Chen. I think I sort of be thinking about the uh, deferral, whether it makes sense at all. Um, I only said that only because I, I feel bad um, to refuse because it seems that they will build this thing. but. I still take the transportation uh, staff report seriously, and I do not think I'm in the position to support. Uh, if you say that just to uh, refuse uh, the transportation, it only takes to refuse variance number two, but in that sense, doesn't make uh, sense. I, I don't see the that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't see anymore just refusing transport number two because the whole thing is about. Mr. Clay, go ahead. Uh, Chair, I, I, I know we could probably discuss this for uh, length, but I think we've chewed it over uh, and I think collectively we're satisfied that uh, what is before us is unacceptable. I'm prepared to move refusal. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? It is seconded, Mr. Byer. Moved and seconded to refuse the application. Those in favor, please show hands. And that vote is unanimous. The Motion is carried. The application is refused. Thank you. We move on. To number 35, 789, Salmon Ave. On this application, we have before us material submitted with the application and one form letter in support signed by the owner-occupant of 160 Woodmount. Um, there is also, yeah, that, that's already there, okay. So we'll ask that agent to join us, please. Committee, Brendan Clapp, acting as agent on behalf of the homeowner. Very good, thank you. Okay, panel members. Any questions here for the agent or any requests? Mr. Nip will go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could you tell me where there are other integral garages on this street? I figured this question. Just bear with me. Sure. Um, as I pull it up, just uh, in terms of housekeeping, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, 
variance number one with respect to the front yard landscaping yes it 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 indicates that it's uh front in brackets west lot line i believe that should say north let's just uh capture that please thank you very much okay variance number one it says west lot west, west lot line and west should actually be north uh i believe so yes well well okay very good we'll ask staff to capture that please and thereby slightly revise the application okay any other changes to the variances or the rest of them okay as they stand no no sir no changes just i just wanted to clarify that that should be north as obviously the front lot line faces north uh in terms of uh, the member's question with respect to integral garages there are there are a few some um i believe there's an integral garage at 788 which actually might be below grade uh so that would be that would have been approved uh, previously um in terms of other integral garages in this general area let's see the semis located at 778 and 780 also have integral garages which are below grade as well so there there is precedence just on the street a few houses away with respect to integral garages thank you sorry through you mr chair yes. we do have um miss scott on the line uh, perhaps maybe sarah can just confirm if she is on the line or not she had contacted us um during our lunch hour uh as she had just returned um i suspect from being out of town and uh realized that this hearing okay. was happening today so could we maybe we could just uh speak to her and see if she'd be speaking in support concern or opposition of the application thank you very much is miss scott able to join us moderator Just taking a moment here, seeing if we can connect with a speaker. My name is Amanda Scott. Hi, yes, me? you're with us. Very good. Hi. Yeah, I'm interested just to uh, just to know what's going on. Um, I don't think I have an objection. I'm concerned vaguely that it might block the sunlight, but um, don't think I'd have much choice in that. So just interested to see how far back the house is going to go and how high it's going to go. Very so. good. Okay. Thank you for your interest and uh chair can you i didn't catch miss scott's address 156 woodmount thank you thank you very much are there any questions for miss scott panel any other questions no okay okay good um then let's go back and uh we'll go back we'll ask the agent to join us and we'll see if we don't we don't need a a presentation in this case okay although agent if you'd like agent would you like to do a presentation for miss scott's benefit uh in the essence of the committee's time i don't believe it's necessary um it doesn't sound like she has very grave concerns, and I can address those in well, terms per of perhaps what you could just, measurements are. If you could just address those, um, uh, she was really talking about height and depth. So just, just talk right. to us about so, height and depth. Um, okay, very good. So Ms. Scott's concern, um, again, with sunlight, um, also with height, um, obviously being the massing from the... Um, so yes, 
In terms of the length of the dwelling, we're, we're compliant with that. Um, we are asking for height, but it's very minimal. We're asking for a difference in one, 1.5, yes, it's a foot and a half of relief in terms of height. Now, what I will point out to the committee members is that um, she is on the east side of the dwelling. The east side of the dwelling, we have a mansard roof style along that side to help mitigate some of the massing. So we're actually in compliance with the uh, main wall height on that side. So the only, the only thing that I can indicate is that the foot and a half overall height would be mitigated by that mansard roof because it does slope somewhat and that the massing does not go all the way up to uh, the uh, nine meters that we're requesting. That's, that's valuable information. Thank you. Okay. That's, and that's all we need in the way of a presentation. Uh, Mr. Clay, questions for you. Um, I'm just looking at the, you're a little bit shy on your front yard soft landscaping, uh, but you are proposing to build a new driveway. Yep. Uh, what material are you planning to use? Uh, if, if it provides some comfort to the committee, we have no issues with uh, using permeable materials for the driveway. Great, thank you. Are there any other questions, Mr. Byatt? Uh, just a quick one. Um, the, the, um... I believe it's a front yard setback. Is that uh, the, the, is that caused by the stairs? It's an, or, or, or the front addition. It's on the west side. Right. Sorry. Thank you, member. So I believe through you, Mr. Chair, that the interpretation of the zoning examiner is taken to the front portion of the dwelling, which would be the foundation. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let us take this application then into committee for a motion. Anyone, or unless anyone has a comment first. Mr. Clay, go ahead, please. Um, no comment, uh, Chair. I thought the explanation was, was reasonable. I think what this is a design that we are seeing uh, more uh, routinely in neighborhoods across the um, the city, uh, it's um, I thought it's not an, um, a a negative. It won't have a negative, I don't believe, impact on the adjacent neighborhood. Uh, it is new. There isn't any of these kinds, and then Carl makes the point about integral garage. There really aren't very many, but there are a couple, uh, although below grade. Um, but I don't think it's um, uh, overwhelmingly uh, large, high, or deep. So I don't. Uh, I think it's a supportable application. So um, uh, unless my colleagues have something uh, to the contrary, I'm happy to move a motion to approve. I would like to put a condition in for uh, having the front driveway be constructed out of permeable pavers, um, and I don't believe there are any other conditions. Very good. Mr. Byatt, seconds. I second. Yeah. It is moved. It is therefore moved and seconded to approve. Those in favor, please show hands. As amended. As, as amended. amended. Yes, as thank a, you. As amended. So we are, we just voted to approve the amended application, <laughs> and thank you very much. We move along to number 36. 27 Hunter. Here the materials are quite simple. We have those submitted at the time of application, plus a zoning waiver from the agent dated 24th of May, 2022. And we'll ask the agent now to join us, please. State your name. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. My name is Adam Brander and my address is 49 Bolton Avenue in Toronto. I'm the agent and the architect for the proposal at 27 Hunter Street. Very good. Okay, so we're not showing anyone here registered to speak in opposition. But if panel, if you have questions or if you'd like a presentation, we can do that. But if you have questions, we can, uh, now is the time. Just two, two minor variances. Mr. Bai, go ahead. Uh, just with regard to, uh, to the rear balcony on the second level and the complete pits uh, with the deck on the third floor. Um, can you just speak to any screening or privacy screening that uh, may be intended for that area? 
Uh, um, certainly through you, um, Mr. Chair, um, there's no intended uh, screening on the balconies. For the third level deck, it is set back from the, the roof edge on all sides, which felt constituted um, uh, addressing the, concerns of overlook. Rear for elevation, neighbors. please. We're just going to pull up the rear elevation here one moment, please. Certainly. Um, so just to, to reiterate, um, the decks are set back on all sides and um, the required setback for decks is, is being met here. It's an as of right condition of 0.45 meters. But in addition to that, um, particularly on the third floor roof deck, there is the, the roof that extends to uh, further out um, shielding the overlook condition. And did, does that work in both both directions for the neighbors on both sides? Uh, yeah, um, the closest proximity is the neighbor to the west, um, which is a compliant condition, but uh, set back, um, I believe, about six or seven meters from the uh, east lot line. Okay. Any other questions? Very good. Let's take the application into committee for a motion, please. Mr. Nipple, go ahead, please. Mr. Chairman, I don't have difficulty with this application except for the point that uh, has been raised about the balcony and the deck. And unless I've got my directions incorrect, I think it's the east face of both the balcony and the deck that um, pose the greatest challenge. I, I'd be inclined to um, approve the application or I, I move a motion to approve the application subject to I'm not convinced that that the setting the, the third floor deck back a bit is really going to stop overlook so I would I would be inclined to have a condition that the east side of the balcony second floor balcony and third floor deck have um, standard 1.5 meter opaque screening if I've got the wrong side perhaps Mr. Brander can correct me but because there's no north point on his plans, but I believe it's the east side that the balcony and the deck and the, and the terrace are closer to the east property line. Um, but that would be my motion. That's the only concern I have. Very good. Is there a second to that motion? It is seconded, Mr. Byatt. Therefore, moved and seconded to approve. Those in favor, please show hands. That vote is unanimous. It carries the, uh, the motion and the application is approved. 18 Linwood Avenue is number 37. And on this application, the only materials before the committee are those submitted at the time of application. We'll ask the agent, please, to join us. State your name. Um, I'm Michael Scott. I'm the owner of the property and also the architect. Oh, very good. Okay. Okay, Mr. Scott, good. Other questions for the owner architect, panel members? Anyone need a presentation? Mr. Scott, is you know, if it was just one thing we asked you to tell us about your application that was unique or appealing or of note, would there, what would it be? Just that the porch is existing. Our proposal is is simply to enclose it with glass. It should still look like a porch, just with glass around it. Okay. Mr. Clay, go ahead. Yeah, Chair. I, I, uh, I, are we in committee? Um, If we're in committee, Chair, I think we'll just, uh, this is a very, very straightforward application with one very minor uh, variance. Yeah. 
Um, I, I think this is a, a very reasonable application, has no impact on uh, anyone. Uh, I'd move approval with uh, no conditions. Thank you. Is there a second? It is. Seconded by Mr. Byatt. It is therefore moved and seconded to approve the application. All those in favor, please show your hands. Thank you. That's a vote of uh, unanimous approval for the motion, and the application is therefore approved. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry to interrupt. I think I made a mistake in the last application. I think it's the west side for the screening, not the east side. Okay, um, that shouldn't be hard to fix. Uh, are you pretty sure of pretty sure of where you? Well, staff could maybe just double check it. It's if if you look at the site plan. Unfortunately, there aren't north points on all the drawings. So, but if you look at the site plan, it's the overlook to the adjacent neighbor, which I believe is to the west. We're going back one application, staff. We're going back to 27 Hunter, trying to get our, our, our bearings on it. Here is, yeah, down, down in the bottom right, there is um, compass bearing. Oh, there you go. So it's the west. It is the west. It is the west. I think. Yeah, and I said east in my motion. Sorry. You did say that. Staff, um, I believe that's just a typo that we can change. Thank you. Three, three, you, Mr. Chair, we can make that change. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Back then to our next application, which is 38240 Dunvegan Road. And on 240 Dunvegan. We have material submitted with the application. There's an arborist report prepared um, and received in May. And there's a commenting report from Transportation Services, a staff report. We'll ask the agent to join us, please. State your name. is Sean McGaffey and I'm a senior urban designer and planner with WND Associates and I uh, reside at 90 Eglinton Avenue East, Suite 970. Good afternoon to you. Panel members on this application, any, any request for a presentation or any questions to put directly to the agent? Okay. Um, I, I have a question for you, and I'll ask staff to help me on this setting it up. If you could show me, uh, let's see now. There is a side view of the property that shows all four stories. It shows uh, the ramp going down to the basement, the car ramp. I think uh, section A, A, I think, shows that uh, perhaps best. That's page 14 of the architectural plans. Thank you. Uh, there that's you the are. One. That's the one. Okay. Oh, There's the sorry, one there. Wait. That's it. Okay. So here we can see the portion of the proposed dwelling that uh, extends underground outside the footprint. And uh, so my, my question to you, is the reason for that large portion outside the footprint of the, base, of the house is the reason for that simply to allow for the, the ramp to be at a reasonable angle? Uh, <clears throat> that's correct. And if I maybe just elaborate a little bit on that Please. for you. Um, you know, the, the use of these sort of, uh, I would call them enclosed ramps to a below grade garage is really a response to the official plan in, in 4.1.5, where it refers to the prevailing location, uh, design, and elevations of grades of garage entrances, as well as avoiding having that pit condition you would see in a front yard. Essentially, you could imagine what it would look like if you were to pull that ramp out into the front yard and have the door um, in a more, perhaps more typical below-grade garage entrance. 
Um, this gives you a nice streetscape view along the road of avoiding having that pit condition, uh, as well as the door is, is screened and integrated into the house itself. Um, okay, um, but what it also does is it, uh, you know, it, it gives rise to this, uh, this subterranean chunk of basement outside the footprint of the house, and there are the potential issues there for a groundwater disruption, um, it's, it, it represents a loss of, uh, of soil volume that we're starting to see as valuable in terms of stormwater absorption and yeah. so on. Why couldn't you, or did you consider, um, what was the, why was this a decision taken against a car elevator? Well, in, in this case, um, with respect to like the soil volume and the rear yard infiltration capacity, we, we did ensure that we're providing for a typical rear yard area above and below grade. So that is something that is secured for that soil volume and that helps with those existing trees that are being preserved as well. Um, in terms of an, an elevating device, um, you know, it, it is something that's considered on some files, but in this case, um, it makes, you know, more sense to have a ramp uh, in this condition. I have been before the committee with car elevator proposals before you might re recall that uh, 50 Crescent Road, where there was a, a car elevator in, within the front yard that provided access. Uh, so it's really a matter of responding to site conditions and where it can be accommodated. A ramp is a preferred solution to that. And certainly in this case, when you look at the criteria um, from the OP, so 3.4.1 3 sub D and 415, um, we're well uh, responding to those conditions of the pattern of the prevailing rear yard setbacks. Um, and height, mass, and scale and density. It's also, the garage is partially located below in a hardscaped area within the rear yard and a, a terrace area as well. Thank you for that. Other questions, panel, for the applicant? Ms. Chan, go ahead. Yes, uh, this is a small question. Uh, you ask uh, the, the driveway with, why do we need nine meters? It's just curious. Just <coughs> Well, the, it's wider than any like even two-way driveway, right? So the the width of the driveway uh, at its widest part, if we could just take a look at the site plan and, and perhaps maybe even the survey, um, the driveway location is really a response to, firstly, the existing condition on the site where you see it flares out there at the property line, um, as well as maintaining the existing hardscape area uh, associated with the tree preservation in that front yard. You see it labeled there with a 0.64 diameter sitting on the property line. Uh, and it will allow for, um, you know, your typical sort of Uber or FedEx uh, uh, truck to park intermittently uh, while doing a delivery uh, without obstructing the, the other driveway access. Other questions, panel? Anyone? And, and just, um, I, I'm not sure about a presentation, but it, we did uh, just have a couple comments for the committee in that um, you know, we are comfortable accepting the, the condition of transportation services who has reviewed the driveway uh, and is comfortable with what's proposed, provided the curb cut is restored to their standards um, once it's modified. And as well, given the building length uh, and the differences above and below grade, I, I would suggest it's probably appropriate to apply a condition of being tied to plants. Yes. So will the a new driveway be of um, a permeable material? <clears throat> I was actually just uh, communicating with, with my client in that respect, uh, as I know it's uh, come up on some other applications. Um, there, I believe they would be open to it provided, you know, we could use um, like a stone slab material uh, that could be set up in a permeable fashion with, with larger uh, coursing gaps. Um, but I don't believe that's an issue and um, it's uh, just a matter of design really and picking the right product. Okay, if there are no further questions for the applicant, then we can take this application into committee for uh, a decision. Anyone, unless some, uh, someone has a comment first, we can go to a motion. Mr. Bayek, go ahead. Um, some comments uh, on my behalf, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, one of the things that I find uh, 
uh, difficult to um, deal with is the the uh, both variants number two and three. Uh, maximum permitted building uh, length is 17 meters, and basically we're being asked for a 29.8 meter below ground and 20 above. Uh, I find that difficult to to um, wrap my head around. Similarly, with uh, variance number three, permitted depth 19 meters, and essentially below ground, we're looking at 30. Um, I recall um, an application not so while, uh, long ago, probably about two weeks, three weeks ago, where we had a similar situation where the basement was extended out way out into the back uh, to accommodate vehicles. Um, I find this uh, difficult to, to uh, approve or approve of, um, especially in, 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 in comparison to so many other applications that we see where some of the variances for length and depth um, much, much smaller. So I find both of these uh, variances um, difficult to support. Thank you. Any other comments? Anyone? Mr. Clay, yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so uh, Zahir makes an, uh, a, a good point, and I think I was on that one where we did actually refuse a similar one. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that there was a slight difference, though, in, in that previous one. In the previous one, there was a landscape, a significant landscaping deficiency, soft landscaping deficiency, where they were seeking uh, as I recall, a rather considerable variance for rear yard landscaping. And it was largely a function of um, you know, their inability to do anything uh, above that um, underground parking area. Um, there is no rear landscaping um, variance in this instance. So I think it's a little bit different. It would just be my only observation. Okay. If no one else has a comment, I'll, I'll put mine in at this stage, and uh, it's along the same lines as those of Zaheer. Um, it's my sense that uh, an elevating device would have done the job perfectly well of getting the cars up and down to the basement garage, and uh, I, I don't like the fact of the length. I, I, I do believe that there's the potential for groundwater disruption and that there's a great loss of soil volume there that, uh, that we're starting to appreciate as having value. So um, so for that reason, I won't be supporting the application. However, is anyone ready with a motion on the application at this stage? Ms. Chan, go ahead. I'm more uh, in line with uh, Larry's comment <coughs> because I was looking at this um, it, it actually does not have a front yard or backyard landscape deficiency, and that, that make a diff big difference. And also, <clears throat> I think the below gray is, is look like it's really like an iceberg uh, proposal, right? But it's the the length and the depth um, is exaggerated below gray, and above gray is still quite acceptable. So, with the conditions that they will put permeable material on the new driveway, I think I can support this application. Okay. Anyone ready with a motion? Oh, Ms. Carl, you want to do it? Uh, um, sure. I I actually don't have trouble with the application. I don't think that a, that a lift would have changed much other than uh, it perhaps would have moved all the parking further forward, but then that would, I assume, mean that all those rooms, exercise room, recreation room, wouldn't exist. And I, that seems to me to be a, a totally different application. I agree with Larry and Yim that, that there was a difference between this one and the previous one that we discussed. And I remember the previous one. I was on that panel as well. Uh, and Larry's quite correct. The, um, the issue was uh, they had a deficiency for landscaping and there was nothing they could do in the backyard um, reasonable in terms of uh, landscaping on top of the garage. I think this one is different. I, I frankly don't have difficulty with the proposal. I think it's um, I think it's well thought out. I think it reasonably it fits reasonably well into the community that it's situated in. 
And I'd like to move approval subject to the transportation condition. And and uh, the uh, permeable pavers in the front. Oh, and the permeable, pardon, pardon me, the permeable pavers as well. Very good. Is there a second to that? It is seconded, Mr. Clay. Moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor, please show of hands. Those opposed. So the record should show that Mr. Byatt and Mr. Mullock were in dissent. The motion is carried. The application is thereby approved. Thank you. Panel moves along to number 39, 2413 Dundas Street West. On this application, committee is dealing with material submitted at application, a cover letter from the agent May 11, a previous 2022 COA decision affecting the property, and we have correspondence in opposition from 7 Prince Rupert and 9 Prince Rupert Avenue. So let us have the agent join us, please. Good afternoon, Mr. It's uh, Jim Katsopoulos on behalf of the owner. Very good. Mr. Katsopoulos, you have five minutes to present your application to the panel. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, thank you so much and uh, members of the committee. Uh, Mr. Chair, as, as you may recall, we were in front of this committee on April the 27th of this year and you just made reference to that uh, uh, decision. And at that time, Mr. Chair, the, this committee had before it an application to add a total of four residential units uh, at the rear of the property, three stories uh, uh, above grade, one story below. And at that meeting, Mr. Chair, the majority of this committee directed the applicant to go away and reconsider the issues of uh, potential overlook and building massing. And Mr. Chair, if the application before you today, that's precisely what the applicant has done. He has now come back, he has reduced the building massing by one story, so we now add the number of units from four to three. And before you now, sir, you have a total of three units, two above grade and one below. And Mr. Chair, the other aspect of this is that the building massing now uh, is in line with the two properties adjoining it, one to the north and one to the south. Yes, so let's just leave, leave that there. That, that photograph is very, very helpful. Yes, sir. Thank you go, very go much. Go ahead. Yep. Um, so, Mr. Chair, uh, and then that, and also there's uh, obviously some other key features of this in terms of addressing the committee's previous concerns about the overlook. We have completely eliminated the previous rear balconies. There are no balconies. It is now just a total of two stories above grade, one below. There is no overlook scenario because the building height matches those two buildings on either side. It also matches the second story deck uh, for the property to directly on the west side of the lane at number 44 Chelsea. Um, and we also are providing Mr. Chair some very reasonable sized uh, units being uh, 660 square feet, 522, 752. And as I stated in my first time around, Mr. Chair, these units will add very much to the city's needs for this type of uh, housing form. We, the, the units are within 500 meters of the Up Express and the subway. And Mr. Chair, there's also, um, there was also an a issue raised by this committee about the, at that time, the basement unit Mr. Chair, we've addressed that as well by providing an ability for that basement unit to have some additional light with the stairwell from the grade down. 
So all in all, Mr. Chair, uh, we feel that we have very sensitively addressed the committee's previous concerns with this application. I might add at some great expense to the owner in order to make these revisions. And for those reasons, Mr. Chair, it is our opinion that the application deserves, uh, has merit for approval and it does meet the four tests under the Planning Act. Thank you. Thank you. So panel members, we do have two speakers standing by to speak in opposition. Shall we hear from them first or do you have questions you want to ask now? Let's go to the speaker so we don't leave them too long. First, just one. Okay, there's, there's only one remaining. Let's go to that speaker. Hello. You can't unmute. Oh. Hello, can you hear me? I do hear you. State, state your name, please. Uh, my name is David Clark. I live at 9 Prince Rupert Avenue. So <clears throat> I live across the laneway and just down about um, 15 meters from the subject site. Okay, David. Um, you have five minutes. Go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, so the, the laneway in this area is 4.74 meters high, um, or wide rather, sorry. And um, so what they're proposing is to build right out to the property line so that the building will be within 4.7 meters of our buildings, which are in a, or the other side of the laneway, which is zoned as residential um, and less than the sort of required 7.5 meter. Um, I couldn't ascertain from the diagrams, but I, I think that the total height, just a calculation of it is going to be about 6.5 meters. So they're going to be outside of the 45 degree angular plane. Um, the other two buildings that he says are the same massing. If one looks, and I had included a picture in, in my letter, um, those ones are actually set, have a step back from the first floor to the second floor, whereas the proposal has actually the second floor canter levered out over the first floor to line up directly with the, the property line on the laneway, um, which I think will sort of make this sort of mass up against the, um, the laneway in that site. I, you know, to be honest, we've had, there's, there's no public space associated with this. We have issues with the tenants on particularly the north side who tend to use the laneway as their personal outdoor space. They let their dog run around, they sit and drink beer, etc., cetera, um, making a lot of noise. We've had people uh, comment on us as we're in our backyard um, doing things from the buildings and adjoining buildings. Um, so there's a, a lack of privacy in our areas. And, and here we'll have windows up on the second floor where those people will be able to look down directly into our property and it's not set back. Um, the parking spot that, that you see there, the open space before 2413, on most days have at least two cars parked in that zone. There is no parking and yet they're putting in three new units um, into this space and I'm just curious where the developer feels one, the two cars that normally park there are supposed to park and any new cars for the other, any for the new tenants and the new units. Um, and lastly, um, well, they, they've used the example of the massing uh, 2459 in their cover letter, that which is three stories, but it is set back such that they have room at the back of their unit for parking before they hit the laneway, whereas this unit is going to be backing right up under the laneway and the cantilevering of it will be right up to the property line and the laneway that's only 7.4 meters wide. Um, as, as for, you know, putting in units in this area, we have probably a thousand units going in or more in this area. This is, there's high intensification going on in this area. The three units here, I think are minimal compared to what else we have going on. And, you know, putting this right up to the laneway, I think it would be advantageous if it was pushed back to at least have a, you know, a minimum requirement on that laneway, which we don't. Um, so that's basically what I, you know, my objection is that, you know, I think it's too large a massing for the width of the laneway that we have. They're not hitting the, I don't think they're hitting the 45 degree angular plane from the property line. They do back onto our, to um, residential property. 
Um, and I do, I am concerned about overlook um, from the second store apartments into the backyards and they haven't addressed the, the lack of parking, um, the taking away the existing parking that's used frequently and any parking for new tenants. Thank you very much. Those are my concerns. Yes, thank you. Panel members, your opportunity for questions. I'm not hearing any, so we'll go back now and the um, agent will have an opportunity to respond to Mr. Clark in rebuttal. Let's go back to the agent, Mr. Katsopoulos. M Mr. Chair, in, in terms of the parking, uh, like I had mentioned, we are within 500 meters of ver two very notable public transit facilities, the Up Express and the subway. And Mr. Chair, this is a, a good form of sustainable development where public transit usage should prevail over the private vehicles. So in our opinion, Mr. Chair, this offers a great opportunity to do this in this instance. Uh, Mr. Chair, in terms of the overlook, that second story unit looks directly into that second story deck of the property behind. There's also, so the, the gentleman said about uh, 15 meters. If you do a rear wall to a rear wall comparison, Mr. Chair, the, pr the proposed rear wall of this uh, unit, especially the second story, to the rear wall of uh, the number seven and number nine, Rupert, it's about 25 to 30 meters. Uh, so Mr. Chair, there will be no opportunity in our opinion to have any overlooked opportunities for the second, especially the second uh, story unit in this case, as it, it is the same height as the building to the north and to the south and it looks directly into the second story deck of the property directly opposite on the west side of the laneway being number 44 Chelsea. So Mr. Chair, and we're also offering, providing sir, you know, Mr. Clark mentioned about uh, you know, the activities. These are above size units, above average size units. There are for families, Mr. Chair, you know, there's 660, 752, 522 square feet. So they will offer the opportunity for family oriented type of uh, uh, obviously tenants. Thank you. So for those reasons, Mr. Chair, we, we think that we've addressed all of the previous concerns. Let's see if the panel have, there are some questions for you. Let's have Ms. Chan first, followed by Mr. Nipfel. Okay. My question is, uh, can the staff please bring up uh, the uh, ground floor plan A102? Yes, this one. Okay, my question is, I'm, I do not un uh, understand the plan too well. Uh, is this uh, on the right hand side that says uh, existing building? Is that part that is the existing commercial u unit or? That is the, that is through you, Mr. Chair. Yes, that is the existing commercial unit. And also on the, to, on the uh, Dundas side of the property. But I, I don't know why you do not show the uh, commercial unit because um, uh, I, the, the, the thing is, You do not convert, uh, the, the commercial unit will be maintained, right? Yes, yes it will. Right. Mm -hmm. And also the, the other, uh, the second question is that in the, in our supplemental uh, material, uh, community planning re recommend to refuse variance number two. Can you respond to that recommendation? Mr. Chair, we're not aware of, uh, we're not, we have not been made aware of such a document. It's, it's in the supplemental uh, material, which uh, variance two is to uh, not allow residential units on the ground floor. Maybe the staff can bring up the, uh, the community planning report. Uh, I don't have that. Uh, I don't Neither have do I. Either. 
sorry, it's... I'm so sorry. I have to apologize. I'm so sorry. That, uh, my note is uh, the next item. Okay. That is oh. for the next, next okay. item. Okay, fine. Yeah. Mr. Niffel, you had a question. Yeah, a very simple question. Mr. Clark, who, thank you, Mr. Clark. He, he comes to committee very well prepared, and I appreciate his, his interest and his research. Uh, he mentioned that there are two existing parking spaces that are in use currently um, at the back of the property. And the question he raised, and I think it's a good one, if they're currently in use, they're presumably being used by the people in the commercial building. What, and is that correct? And if so, what is the arrangement for those people to park when the residential component is built? Mr. Chair, uh, there, there will have to be other arrangements made for those uh, commercial, uh, and of course the, the benefit to you, uh, to member NIFL is that obviously there's opportunities for public transit usage here, given our proximity to the Up Express and, and also the subway. So there will have to be other arrangements made, Mr. Uh, Chair, if the committee deems this to be an appropriate uh, development. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further questions for the agent panel before we go into committee? I'm not hearing any, so let's go into committee and uh, move toward a decision as we can move. Mr. Clay, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Chair. I can't recall who else was on this panel uh, with me. Uh, I was. Carl, you I were. Was. I was as well. Um, and I do recall the discussion about this one. It was originally a three-story um, um, uh, building uh, with lots of bad, uh, big massing and concerns about overlook. Um, and I think we collectively, Carl, as a committee, um, thought that this was a good location for this type of yeah. development. Um, and we wondered whether uh, it might be uh, a, uh, appropriate for the agent to go away and come back with a, a more modest proposal. Uh, frankly, that is exactly, I think, what he has done, and I think it is a, a good proposal. It does take away the stairs that were at the rear. It does take away the balconies. It does take away the upper story. All those things were the things, the concerns that we had uh, when, uh, when we discussed it last time. Um, it just seems to me that some of the benefits of this application uh, previously were its location, its proximity to transit, its proximity to commercial areas, its proximity to park and amenities, um, that it was an appropriate area for this kind of rental accommodation. So I think this is an example where an applicant has heard what the committee has said, gone away and come back um, with a proposal that addresses those concerns and I think it's now supportable. I totally agree. Uh, I can remember, um, I won't go through the same points that Larry did, but we did have a number of concerns. We did like the location for housing. Uh, we had a number of concerns and to his credit, the applicant went away and as far as I can see has responded to everything we asked him to respond to. And I think the proposal we have before us um, warrants um, support. Panel members, if I may interrupt for a moment, um, I've just had word from the moderator that uh, Bennett Mills, who was registered to speak and with whom we were not able to make contact previously is now on the line. I am afraid that this, this application has advanced to the point now that, um, that uh, I, I think we should continue with it, uh, continue toward him. So uh, my apology to Mr. Mills, but um, we did <coughs> work to make contact. Chair, would it, I mean, I think if he's made a reasonable attempt to contact us, maybe, I mean, I think it seems prudent for us to hear. We haven't made a decision yet. Yeah. I've certainly, ref, I've certainly reflected on uh, my views as is Carl, but I think it'd be appropriate to allow, allow him to speak. Well, that's, that's fine with me too. Let's do that. I agree. Okay, then let's, let's backtrack. We are now going to leave being in committee and Moderator, if Mr. Mills is with us and is able to join us, let's have him come on the line and state his name.
Bennett, Bennett Mills? Okay, take a moment. At this stage, take a moment and uh, do that. I'm going to excuse myself for about... Well, we'll take a three-minute recess at this stage to see if we can, if we can resolve this. Three-minute recess, then we'll, we'll return right where... Application. Bennett Mills, can you hear us? Hello, Bennett. Bennett. Hello, Bennett. If staff unmutes you, please do not unmute yourself. We will do that. We okay. see that you are unmuted, Bennett. Here's Bennett joining the meeting now. Well done. Bennett's? Oh, Bennett left the meeting. Okay, at, at this. I, I see him back here. Ms. Sorry, Mr. Chair. I do see that Bennett's in the meeting, and okay. I see that we've unmuted him. So perhaps he's having an issue on his end. I think perhaps that is the case. So, Bennett, mm -hmm. if you can hear me, my apology to you. I, we do have to carry on with the meeting. We have, we have tried very hard to include you in it, and um, I'm sorry we'll miss what you had to say because we would have liked to have been able to hear that but 
Um, at this stage, I don't think we can connect with you. The problem may be conceivably at your side, and we're going to have to continue with our application and our hearing. So thank you, panel, for your patience. Let's go. We are in the middle. We're, we're now back into committee. So, Sarah, you know, we're, 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 gonna, we're moving on now on that one. Um, and, uh, panel, we're back into, com into committee on this. Mr. Uh, Clay had just made some comments. And um, if Mr. Clay, would you be able to pick up where you had? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'd finished my comments. Carl had uh, had reflected on it as well. And if my colleagues don't have anything they um, else to add, I think uh, I'd like to move a motion to approve this application. I don't believe there are any conditions. Thank you, Mr. Nipple. Seconding. Yes. Okay. So it is moved and seconded, therefore, to approve. All those in favor, please show of hands. A unanimous vote carries the motion. The application is approved. Thank you. And that takes us to number 40. 1001 Queen Street <coughs> West. 1001 Queen West. On this application, we have before us materials submitted. We have a cover letter from the agent, August 4th. Um, we have various committee of adjustment decisions from the past. We have bylaw number 895-2003 affecting the subject property. There is an arborist report dated October 2021. And there's presentation material dated the 24th of August, 2022. There is a staff report from Urban Forestry dated August, 2022. So we'll ask the agent to join us, please, by stating your name. Uh, good evening. Can everyone hear me? Yes, good evening to you. Perfect. Yes, it is evening now, okay. <laughs> it is evening now. Yes, Chad John Baptiste with uh, WSP. Okay, uh, Chad. For the application. Very, very good. So, Chad, um, I'm showing other, other speakers registered to speak who are part of the team, um, Gavin McLaughlin, the architect, and Douglas Weaver from CAMH. Are, are any of them intending to speak, or will you be representing the, uh, the application? I'll be representing the, Very uh, good. the application. And there's, there's no one registered to speak in opposition. So, okay. So panel members, that's the story. We have uh, the agent here with us. No one registered to speak in opposition. Would you like a presentation? Do you have any questions to put to the agent? Mr. Clay. Yeah, no, I, uh, I wanted to commit. I actually thought uh, the presentation was, was outstanding. I, uh, I thought it was excellent. It was very helpful. Um, this is a, um, an application which I, I think advances the public interest in terms of uh, more um, uh, office space for CAMH. Um, my only question is there is a string of uh, committee decisions uh, varying the original site-specific bylaw. And this is a seven-story uh, new build uh, that I guess wasn't contemplated in the original um, site-specific bylaw. So um, is that is I, I, I don't know if I have a question there, but it's just, it, it seems like, you know, a lot of the stuff that you've been doing wasn't part of the original um, uh, bylaw, and you're kind of constantly adding on through this process. Is that, uh, your, is that, is there any concern with that? Through, through the chair, if, if, I, if I may respond Go. to that. Um, I understand the concerns in terms of there's been a few variance applications that have occurred over time. There's also been a few consent applications for, for easements and, and so on. Speak However, up just, Mr. Mr. Jean-Baptiste, speak up just a little bit, please. Oh, I apologize. My throat's, my voice is going here. Um, I do appreciate the, the concern of the uh, committee member. However, I must say that um, 
This has been an evolving master plan since it was originally uh, approved in 2002 and the site-specific bylaw in 2003. Um, and so the variances have mostly been, as you've dived into the details of the design of each of the individual blocks, that's where you start to see some variances in terms of parking or some adjustments for some heights and so on, depending on the specifics of the building design. And so it's in our view that the, you know, the past application and the application before the committee today is very much consistent with the zoning bylaw that was approved back in the 2003 and it's consistent with the master plan that was approved as well. Yeah, and, and that's all I was really looking for is, is you know, that kind of comfort that this is all part of a grand plan. It's just we need tweaks as we go along. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Byatt? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I don't have uh, a question, actually. I just wanted to compliment uh, and echo my colleague, Larry, uh, Clay, about the presentation. I think the presentation was excellent. Um, I also just want to compliment CAMH for, and, and whoever else is behind, which other agencies are behind, for uh, producing the kind of uh, facility and facilities uh, that our city and, in fact, our province uh, requires so desperately at this point in time. And it's an ideal, not an ideal, but it's a historic location. So I, I look at this application and um, I have absolutely no uh, concerns about uh, um, moving a motion to approve. Are you doing so? You're moving a motion? Yeah, unless my colleagues, uh, uh, Ms. Nipfel and uh, Ms. Chan, have any comments to make, I'll certainly go with it. Okay. So, hey, I, I, I'll just add that I, I think that this is meeting a critical need and, and uh, I'm, very, I'm very in support of what is being proposed. Um, similar to Larry, I think the master plan and the presentation was absolutely superb. Uh, it's a very complicated project, uh, a lot of constraints to deal with, and I think that it was explained very well for us, um, and I appreciated that. And, I have no trouble at all in supporting this application. Ms. Chen, you wanted to say something. I just wonder whether there's an urban forestry condition, that's all. There number, is. Two, number two, number two. Yes, I think there's, yeah. Okay, thank you, yeah. Okay, so um, Mr. Byatt had put a motion forward. So is there a second? I, I, mean, I understand there is. Who would like to second Mr. Mo Mr. Byatt's motion? It is seconded by Ms. Chen. Moved and seconded, therefore, to approve. Those in favor, please, show of hands. And that's a unanimous vote to uh, carry the motion and to approve the application. Thank you. Number 41 is 18, Wellwood. On 18 Wellwood, before us are submitted materials, cover letter from the owners, 27 July, previous Committee of Adjustment decision, 2021. There's an arborist report that includes a tree preservation plan. There is an urban forestry letter of clearance and various presentation materials from 23 August. There are staff, is a staff report from Transportation Services, and another from Urban Forestry. We have support from the following. Two Wellwood, 15 Wellwood, 73 Humewood, from Ariel Holden, from three Wellwood, 12 Wellwood, 20 Wellwood, seven Wellwood, 14, and 16. <coughs> Wellwood. And there's a 22, uh, c 22, uh, there are 22 form letters in support signed by the owners and occupants of addresses on Humewood, Maplewood, and Wellwood. We shall ask the agent then to join us, please. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, can you hear me? 
I do hear you. Please state your name. Perfect. My name is Matthew Balbacera, and I'm the owner and uh, agent for this application. Very good. Panel members, questions for this uh, for this agent, Mr. Clay? Yeah, I was just going to. So is, does this boil down to simply a technical change to uh, correct uh, um, is it uh, encroachment by 0 0.01 meters? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, no, the the major administrative change that I'm seeking today is the transportation department's condition. That 0 0.01, the change to variance number 10 for the canopy encroachment, that was just something that we picked up through the development of the construction drawings, and I thought it would be appropriate to bring back to committee to capture that. But the primary focus in the administrative change that I'm requesting today is to adopt the condition as stated in the current staff memo provided by the transportation department. Could I ask, was there a, I, I was confused by the wording. I, I don't have any difficulty with the transportation uh, condition, but was there a previous condition that you want to have replaced? I, the wording sent, tended to suggest that you had trouble with the previous condition and you wanted yeah. to change it. Yes, yeah, so um, just to provide the, the committee with some context, when I was approved on March 2nd, I then followed through and made an application to the building department um, for in order to obtain my permit. Um, I also applied for the front yard parking permit, uh, as well as clearance from urban forestry. Um, when I was in a position to pull my permit uh, towards the middle of June uh, in order to start construction this year. Um, the way that the condition was previously worded, the building department was unable to release the permit because I had not obtained the permit as stated in the condition. Now, uh, since that time, uh, I have completed the technical review in the front yard parking. Um, it's just at the, the, the polling stage at this point. But you know, there have been several discussions with transportation staff. Transportation's intention at the time of the original approval was not to prevent me from pulling my permit. They're having serious delays internally with the review and approval of these front yard parking permits. And unfortunately, it resulted in me not being able to pull my permit back in June. So the issue here is the condition as we're as before us today is to apply rather than to receive. Absolutely, yes. Okay, that's clear, thanks a lot. I think further in, uh, in the transportation memo, uh, Daniel Reynolds, the supervisor who wrote the report, further states that it's a uh, fulfilled condition at this point. I've already made the application, and like I mentioned, it's nearing the end of its review. Are there further questions? No. If not, we can take the application into committee. And uh, Mr. Nipple, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, this is this is clearly a technical uh, issue, and I'm really sorry that the applicant was held up because of uh, the use of, of wording in the condition. I have no difficulty at all in approving this application, subject to the transportation condition that is in the memo. Let's be really clear. It's in the memo dated August the 18th, 2022. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? Can okay, Mr. Mr. Byatt first, Ms. Chan second. Go, Mr. Byatt. Sorry. There's also a forestry condition number two, and I'd be happy it's to second. Clear. It's, it's cleared, though. They've cleared the forestry condition. They've got a clearance for the forestry condition. So the forestry... Okay. The forestry condition, then Ms. Chan, um, oh wait, okay, just a moment here. So the forestry condition has been lifted, it, does, it doesn't apply? Well, it's been cleared. I mean, it's, it's been clear. I think they've met it. Through you, Mr. Chair, it is in our package, and the date is June, I believe, the 15th of this year, and it's letter of clearance. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So the, okay, forestry then has, has cleared. Okay, Ms. Chan, you had... No there question. we go. Uh, um, my question is the uh, yeah, it's the urban forestry condition. That's all. There we it's go. Been the, answered. There's the letter of clearance. Okay, so, yep, 
no need to uh, refer to forestry in this motion. Okay, so let's go back to Mr. Nipple's motion. Is there a second to his motion? It is seconded, Mr. Bryan. Moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor, please show hands. That vote is unanimous um, in favor. So the motion is carried and the application is approved. Thank you. Item number 42 is 361 Euclid. And on 361 Euclid, we have before us application materials plus one previous Committee of Adjustment decision from 2022. We'll ask the agent to join us, please, stating your name. Hello, my name is Drew Mandel. I'm the agent for the owner. Okay, uh, Drew, you're, you're, you're faint. I'm hearing you, but you're faint. I'll speak up if that helps. You're much better now. Thank you. Thank you. Panel members, any questions for the agent? <sighs> hearing none. Mr. Byatt, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just have concerns with um, both uh, variants number one and number two uh, with regard to the soft landscaping. Could the agent perhaps just uh, provide some explanation, context, whatever? Yes, um, I, I would like to note um, that this this scope of work was included in our June application, and it was an error on the part of the committee that uh, when they requested additional changes uh, to other parts of the project, uh, rather than include a supplemented uh, um, list of variances, they deleted, um, they replaced the, the list of variances, and so the laneway house was deleted rather than included, and so that forced us back. So um, all of this work had been vetted through neighbors, through uh, the city, and through um, all of our conversations, and so it, it was a highly unfortunate process that we needed to return, and everyone was in support. We received a, a number, nine letters of support from neighbors. Uh, all, uh, all very relevant. So, uh, so I mean, that's just a starting point. Just that it's unfortunate that we have to return when it was well vetted and reviewed and endorsed. How about the uh, soft landscaping? Yeah. So the um, the soft landscaping behind the laneway is being is, is untouched. So there is a portion behind the garage existing that we are not touching. So that is just going to remain as is. And as a precedent, I I believe there are zero within view of this laneway, there is zero uh, spaces that have any soft landscaping in the laneway itself. So that's number three. Um, number uh, two variance um, is indeed um, below what is requested. Um, the city had, we did discuss with the city, they, they, um, they, were, uh, it, they were happy that we were planting two trees and that we had green roofs. Uh, elsewhere in the project on the main house and did not object to our landscaping and and so we moved forward with that uh, that discussion concluded and endorsement from the neighbors would you, uh, you, you do you have a little bit of concrete in there right so uh, i notice there's a concrete kind of patio concrete walkway are you are you building this from scratch is there any opportunity to do something creative with those pieces? Um, we, there, there is an option to do that, yes. Well, why don't, why don't we explore that a little bit? Uh, and, and uh, you know, we don't want to derail you again, uh, but uh, if we, for example, put a condition in that um, required you to use permeable pavers for that patio and that walkway, would that be helpful um, um, you know I, I, I we 
we always try to design these things um, to make good sense and on the fly is uh, you just hesitate to say sure change it uh, without looking at it properly uh, given the history on this file as well it's it's, it's I mean a crushing crushing delay uh, really so um, I mean if if or the pro if the proposal were to fail uh, unless we did this I I'd, I'd, I'd take um, doing this rather than being rejected uh, again I'm gonna say, I know it, it might not be pertinent to you but I mean it was well vetted and supported by the city in its previous incarnation uh, so we weren't anticipating trouble um, and we I mean we did spend clients money on on green roofs to try to overcome and have water retention and be responsible as well soft landscaping has become a sharp a sharp focus for the committee because of a whole bunch of little decisions have uh, created a trend in which the amount of of uh, soft landscaping is decreasing rather than the other way around so um, the, the little decisions, I, I would know, the little sorry, decisions sir, make I would, the little decisions sorry, make a difference and uh, the goal is always to uh, is to see each property do its fair share in terms of stormwater absorption so that's why we're asking you to be creative here. Agreed. I would note that, again, the green roofs do have significant water retention in, in my experience. Uh, we did increase the front landscaping um, significantly. Um, you increased front landscaping? Tell us about that. Well, we were uh, in discussions for our, in our earlier proposal. Uh, we we, we uh, amended our proposal and increased the front landscaping. Uh, to try to uh, to better the general proposal. Okay. And um, again, the green roofs, the plantings, and there is significant concrete in the existing situation that we uh, we our position was or our feeling was that we weren't making matters worse. Um, but I do take your point to the general direction of the city and the and the priorities, and we do try to respect that again at the front by increasing um, plantings. Um, there's significant concrete throughout this property. It's it basically been abandoned for years and, and uh, has significant concrete areas. Other questions, panel? Not hearing any. Okay. In that case, we can take the application into committee. Ms. Chan first, Mr. Niffel second. I'd just like to uh, take, just, just give a comment. I'm more sympathetic for uh, the applicant's position because they actually have come through uh, committee adjustment uh, before and also with the planning staff they work out their green roof they could they, they have improved their current situation i have no problem with uh, with, uh, with the proposal this time and I, I i don't i'm not too sure about the uh, condition even on the permit book paper not too sure where Larry was talking about that. Okay. Mr. I'm happy to, uh, to support it as it is. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not uncomfortable either you know, uh, for the reasons. I didn't realize that they had done a number of remediation efforts on other parts of the... Uh, and I do, I, I always get a little bit concerned about changing the structure around a pool just because I just, I just don't know enough about what kind of retention, uh, engineering retention issues that are involved there. So I don't like mucking with uh, treatments around pools. So I'm, I'm, I'm not uncomfortable with this application either. Oh, okay, Mr. Nipfel. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move approval without conditions. I'm sympathetic to what Mr., uh, what the applicant has been through. It's unfortunate and regrettable. Um, uh, this is a, a particularly uh, well-known and competent architect. He's indicated that permeable pavers might, in fact, be uh, desirable. Um, he just doesn't want that in the conditions, and I completely appreciate that. I would, uh, I would trust that if he, uh, along the way, decides that he can incorporate them, he will, but I wouldn't put them in as a condition. Therefore, I'd like to move approval of the application just as it stands. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? It is seconded, Ms. Chan. Moved and seconded to approve. Those in favor, please show of hands. And that is a unanimous vote. Carries the motion, the application is approved.
Number 43, the last item on today's hearing agenda is 78. I'm paying conflict of interest on this item. Yes, you have. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so Ms. Chan will not be, uh, not be either hearing us or voting on it. 78 Gooch Avenue. On this application. Cindy McPhee, address is 16. I, on this application, panel has before it revised site plans, floor plans, and elevations. There's presentation material from 30th of August. There is correspondence urban forestry and also TRCA. We have three form letters in support, 74 Gooch and 1 and 19 Van Stassen. And we have correspondence in opposition from 82 Gooch, Margot Duncan. Okay. And checking with you, moderator. Can you tell me how many uh, registered speakers are there standing by in opposition? Three or two? I, I'm counting three? Three. Okay. Very good. Let's then have the applicant join us by stating his name or her name, please. Good evening. My name is Cindy McPhee. I'm the uh, agent for the homeowners. And my address is 16600 Ave, Bayview, Bayview Ave in Newmarket, Ontario. Very good. You have five minutes to present your application to the panel. Please proceed. Okay. Um, so we originally applied to the city for a permit to do a rear addition on the back. And through that application, these zoning items were identified on the existing carport that was built by the homeowner about 12 years ago. Um, this is a property that has been owned by um, the homeowners since the early 70s. And they have worked really hard at improving the property and maintaining it. And that's how I came about to help them with the rear addition. And um, the rear addition isn't a zoning issue, but the existing structure is. So these six items, um, sorry, some of them are the existing driveway, the width of the driveway, um, also to the slope of the existing driveway. It's lower than the um, street. And that's because the property is on a severe hill. It slopes from the front where the street is down to the backyard. That's an existing condition. Um, I, the, the other variances are in relating to the existing carport. And um, we are seeking approval for our application on these conditions. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Cindy, that's uh, that's appreciated. Thank you, panel members. We have three speakers standing by. I, I suggest we go ahead and hear the first one. Let's do that then. Moderator, first speaker, please. Hello, my name is Margo Duncan, and I have lived at 82 Gooch for over 34 years. The letter I submitted to the committee sets out the concerns about the initial and revised applications. But since then, I've received Ms. McPhee's 24th of August letter. In that, I understand that variance one applies to the garage. The application reads that the structure will be located, et cetera, et cetera. It already exists and was constructed without a permit. So now a variance is being requested on an illegally built structure and not a permit for the structure. The variance would then seem to legitimize the carport garage, which I do not agree should be permitted. I request that an application to build the structure be required, not a variance. The second variance, the excessively wide driveway, was also done without a permit and should be returned to its proper width 
with the north side returned to green space at the proper height. Let me interrupt you for just a moment, please. Staff, could you put up the site plan, please? With particular emphasis on the front of the property, the driveway. Go ahead, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead, Margaret. Well, that's fine. Um, my property is also on the hill, and I've had the driveway fixed to lessen the slump. These owners can do the same. Variance number three says that the width will be 6.22 meters wide. It already is that, almost double the width of mine. Ms. McPhee's assertion, assertion in her 24 August letter that the flare of the driveway is needed because it's an awkward entrance is ludicrous. Every driveway on our side of Gooch has the same driveway condition. The street is very curvy and we all manage to get into our legal width driveways just fine. To suggest that 78 is unique and needs special attention is absurd. This is not a driveway, it's a parking lot. Ms. McPhee's letter respecting variance four seems to say that the driveway somehow caused the reduction in landscaping required. The owners changed the driveway causing less green space. To suggest that the owners are kindly now maintaining the boulevard causes my head to spin. As the pictures I submitted show, there is no boulevard at 78 or any address along Gooch. The property abuts, abuts the public sidewalk which abuts the road. I also have a garden for my whole front yard on both sides of my driveway. Like 78, it was my choice rather than to have grass. I certainly don't think that gives me the right to widen my driveway without a permit because I take care of a non-existent boulevard. The owners have been told twice directly by the city, and if it hadn't been for COVID, would have had to be told yearly. To keep the cedar hedge on the north side of the sidewalk, at the sidewalk cut low for driver visibility. The city hasn't been out recently, so the owners have cut the hedge, but they planted rows of Sharon around the hedge, with they've, which they've let grow higher than the hedge to dangerously affect driver visibility. Like their usual behavior, they chisel around to impose their wishes on the neighbors. As with variants one and, and five, the eaves are there now, which should be cut back or the thing demolished. Variant six, which Ms. McPhee seems to indicate is the parking space in the unpermitted carport garage, it does not make it clear if this is this post is near the front or back of the carport. If at the back, it is likely past the point where a car could park. However, as with this whole illegally built structure, it should not be permitted. The final comment in Ms. McPhee's 24 August letter is significantly misleading. I have never received any communication whatsoever respecting this application until I received the notice from the Committee of Adjustment. There has been no note in my mailbox from the owners nor from their agent. When a surveyor was moving around my property, I inquired as to why, and he told me that the owners at 78 had requested a survey. That was my only clue to the possibility of an application for something. My request to the committee is that these owners be required to make application to permit the front veranda, which was also built without a permit, the um, the, the carport garage, that they have, to, they have to go through the proper process, that they be required to reduce the front driveway to the legal width for the whole length and that the green space be returned to the north side. Should the committee decide to permit the structure in the back, that it be very clear that the quote unquote new area is not to be built on in any way without a prior building permit from the city. These owners have flouted the law at every turn and consistently act as though no laws apply to them. I believe that the only reason this is before the I shall ask for your final comments now, please. I'm asking you, please do not reward years of ignoring processes and laws. Please do not permit the variances on major unpermitted construction and please require that the driveway and green space be returned to the permitted side. Thank you. Panel members, questions for, yes, Mr. Clay. Um, well, I want to thank Ms. Duncan uh, for her comments, and I fully appreciate that you're very upset about what has gone on here, uh, and you've raised a number of concerns about uh, procedural anomalies. Um, but I noticed that you, you live a couple doors away. Is there any, like, what's the, what's the actual impact of this proposal on you and your property? Our properties, as it says in the um, Ms. McPhee's um, submissions, are wide at the front and narrow at the back. So we're actually very close to each other in the backyard. It's not like there's you know big backyards like in the suburbs. 
because of the slope of our, um, and so it impacts everybody in the backyards quite closely, but because of the slope and the front of it, when I go out my driveway, their behavior, particularly in taking out the green space and allowing it to grow, causes me to not be able to see cars coming around the curve. They're at the top of the curve, and I'm just slightly below it. So it does impact me directly, particularly there. It also is just completely and utterly galling. The, and, and, and I've had an issue with them blatantly lying to me that ended up in a four-year dispute with the city spending two years on it and having to go to court to force them to comply with the bylaws. So this has gone on a long time, and they have not lived there the entire time. They moved away and lived somewhere else for many years renting a place. And then they came back and, and are you know just doing whatever they want again. So this is a long history of them doing things that impact neighbors, and they couldn't care less as long as they do what they want. So it does, and, it, and it, if you can see the, the curve, of the driveway, you'll see that their behavior in the front, and even their garden, the garden is so high that you really can't see past it when you're pulling out of your driveway. Mrs. Duncan, do you live at 74? I'm trying to- I, No, I, 82, I, 82, I'm to the north. So the house okay, on, immediately next to them is not attached, and then the 80 and 82 are attached. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll go on now to the second speaker who's standing by. This is Rosa Solar. I'm here with my mom, Heather Berkeley. Um, we live at 76 Gooch, so we're directly connected to the semi-detached. Um, I guess we'll just start by stating... Just a moment, please. I, I'm sorry. I, I actually miss, I missed your name. I know you're there with your mom, but your name is... Rosa Solar and my mom's Heather Berkeley. Okay, Rosa Solar. Okay, very good, Rosa. You have five minutes to address the committee. So, just to kind of repeat what Margot stated, there was never really a discussion or open communication with any of the neighbors on the street in regards to these build plans. We were received the revised notification letter in the mail, which was 10 days ago, and that was the first that we had heard of, you know, the extension of the deck and even the car park. Um, not having a permit in the first place. So we felt pretty blindsided. Following that was the, their own, uh, the owner's son canvassing the area for signatures of support, um, to which you've seen there are several, but really the neighbors that we spoke to, that we had spoken to, weren't really given full information. Um, so there was never a question of concern as not only their neighbor, but as the home directly connected to theirs. So the build really does not take into consideration any concerns we may have with privacy, blockage of sunlight, and the overall aesthetics. Could you talk about those things, please? I'd like to know yeah. how, how the application is impact, or would impact you with respect to those things you've mentioned, sunlight and so on. Of course. So in regards to the one-story addition, um, our first question is the roof. It's, it's pretty steeply sloped from what we can see in the plans. We're, we're wondering if the appropriate drainage will be installed for rain and snow to ensure it doesn't drip directly onto our deck, because right now it's kind of a flimsy fence that we would be defending that. Our second question for the one-story addition is, is there going to be a window proposed on the side facing our deck that would be looking directly into our privacy? In regards to the new deck running from the one-story addition, it's not clear to us how high that deck will be. So we'd like to know the height of it and if a privacy wall or fence will be built on their part to ensure that privacy is respected on both sides. Um, as well, I guess this is just a general question. What are the requirements um, in terms of sharing a construction timeline? We're worried that the plans were never discussed with us in the first place. So we're not sure if the timeline will be and if a construction crew shows up, sounds travel very easily within the structure. and. We both work from home, and it'll be really difficult to take calls, et cetera. So we're wondering if there's a policy or a mandate in regards to sharing that information. OK, thank you. Panel members, any questions here? Or, Chair, can I just clarify? So I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch the address. This is the resident of number is, 76, the attached semi? This is Rosa Solar. I'm not sure if she lives here, but her mother does. This, yes. But it, it is 76. It's the, uh, do you live there too, Rosa? Yes, they do. You do that. Okay. Pardon me. Okay. Thank you. So Rosie is the next door neighbor in the attached yeah. unit. Yeah. Very good. 
Let's go on now to the third speaker standing by. Hi, is the committee able to hear me? Yes, we, we do hear you. Just have to state your name, please. Uh, sure, I'm just calling in by, by telephone. Uh, my name is Shelley Edwards. I live at 80 Gooch Avenue, so I am in the uh, directly beside uh, 78 Gooch, but in a, in a separate semi-detached. You have five um, minutes to address so for, uh, your concerns to the panel. Well, Tell us what the impact will be on I you. Will, uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Margo, uh, Margo and Rosie actually covered a lot of what I'd have to say, um, so I will just scan my comments and uh, see what I'd really like to, to put forward. Um, let me start by saying the, a couple of general comments in Ms. McPhee's letter that I found in the, um, in the file uh, of the application, uh, because I found some of the, the information to be incorrect or at least misleading, and I want to make sure that the committee is aware of that. Uh, page one, it says the variance of the request are for existing built items that the homeowner built years ago. So this, make it seem, this makes it seem like the changes were made decades ago and that they should be grandfathered in when in fact the changes in question were only made once Alex and Jimmy sold their home in Mississauga and moved back to 78 Beach. What now, was that time? The exact year what, that. what was the time frame? Yeah, yeah I'm not that? sure of the exact timeline, but I would have to say approximately 15 years ago. I might be off by, by a couple. So anyway, certainly not decades ago. Um, on page four of that same letter, uh, it says typically in this neighborhood, the accessory structures such as carports and garages are built right to the property line. Um, I've been in the neighborhood 31 years and I don't believe that to be true, but uh, be that as it may, there's no empirical evidence in the letter to prove this claim and I suggest that the committee disregard it unless you have other data to support it. Um, lastly, from that letter on page four, it talks about neighborhood communication, and I think both Margo and Rosie spoke to this. Um, the only reason I found out about uh, this, this particular hearing um, or that any variances were being proposed is that I saw uh, someone taking measurements and they were on my property and I asked him what he was about. Then he said, oh, he was taking measurements for some submission by 78 Gooch. But um, anyway, my neighbor never mentioned it to me certainly didn't ask me to write a letter of support, so I do find that quite telling. Um, so that's from Ms. McPhee's letter. Uh, issues with specific variances. Um, my main issue is with items three and four on the list, which cover driveway width and landscaping requirements. Uh, if someone there can pull up slide number two from the August 30th letter of objection. Just hang uh, on till we I get that up. Um, Let, let's pull it up, just hold on. Sure. Or? Yeah, just let me know when it's there. Sorry, when was that letter submitted? Uh, it's labeled, in that file, it's labeled August 30th, uh, letter of objection. That's the date that it was submitted, so if you look at the dates in the right-hand column, you know. I think it's the only document that was submitted on August 30th. this the correct document? It's got four uh, photos in it. I can't see what's on your screen because I'm calling in by phone. Okay, I, I think I have the correct document. Which slide were you referring to? Okay, so if you look, so at slide number two, right, so if you're looking at uh, that photo, I've labeled three trees that the homeowner removed prior to their driveway widening project which at the time we didn't really know was a driveway widening project. So at least two of those trees, I believe, would have met the municipal codes related to city and private tree protection. Um, specifically, those trees were 30 centimeters or more in width at chest height. And then there was a third tree closer to the house that uh, probably wouldn't have met that requirement. So those trees are down, they're paved over. There's no way other than this picture to prove that they ever existed. But I, I have to say that removal of that green space was really quite, uh, quite distressful for us. And then, um, and particularly when asking why the trees were being taken down, 
never got a straight answer. It only became obvious once the project uh, proceeded. Um, so subsequently, the asphalt was put down, and we saw that the driveway would be over 20 feet wide at points. And to this day, I still don't understand why the driveway expansion was made. Jimmy and Alex are a one-car family. Their driveway and carport can handle at least five vehicles. And in all the time I've lived beside them, they rarely have visitors that require a parking spot. I'll ask you. Spot, let alone. I'll ask you, please, for your final comments now. Sure, sure. So the most important impact on me is the um, the hedge, which, as Margot stated, had to be cut down, and the flowers that continue to grow um, higher than the hedge, blocking all all visibility. I have zero visibility of any pedestrian traffic coming by my home, um, and that puts people at risk. Um, so that, Excuse me, Mr. Uh, those Chairman, flowers, the next photo shows that. If, sorry to interrupt, but you've got a. Oh, no, no, yeah, by photo. all means, thank your, you. Your next, your next photo slide shows. number four. Yeah, slide number yeah, four. The next we'll photo show there. There it is. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, they're, they're way high. And I can tell you, I almost hit a woman and a baby carriage the other day even though I was inching, well, thankfully, I was inching my way out because I certainly couldn't see them and I was able to stop in time. Um, and this is, you know, in addition to not being able to see cars unless I'm halfway across the, the sidewalk. Okay. So the stress that it puts on me, the risk for other people, it's, it's just dangerous. Okay, um, your, your time the is... The other thing I would mention... Your, your time is up. Your time is up. Well, that's too bad because there is other impacts. Your, well, anyway. well, we'll see if any of the panel have questions for you. I know that I have one. I'll go with my question okay. first, um, Ms. Edwards. Um, the rear addition to the subject property, I'm not asking for the exact date, but um, about how long ago was that rear addition built? Like um, a year, five years, 10 years? Who, what, which rear addition? Mine or theirs? Oh, no, on the, on, on the, at, at 78. At 78, so the basement addition must have been put in, I don't know, I'm guessing 10 to 15 years ago. 10, I, 10 to I don't honestly remember. Okay. Okay. But yeah, and somebody can should verify that, but that's, anyway, it was, it okay. was a while ago, but. It wasn't uh, a year ago. It's, it's, it wasn't a year ago. It's 10 or 15 years ago. Okay. That's what I'm trying to find out. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Panel members, other questions for this speaker? Are there any? Not hearing any. So at this stage, we'll go back to the agent who will have a chance to respond in rebuttal to the issues specifically that were um, raised by these three speakers. So we'll go back now to the agent. And uh, is there a picture, I just want to ask staff, staff, is there a photograph that is, shows kind of a, a front view of the house and the driveway? Okay, we have, we have uh, I'm thinking, no, no, I'm thinking of a photograph. Anything in the way of a photograph that, or perhaps you could bring it up on Google Earth. If you could bring up a front view of the property on Google Earth, Google, Google uh, Maps, I mean. Okay, let's go back now to the agent for rebuttal. Agent? Thank you. Um, I would first like to say that I feel like the neighbors did a very good job in presenting to the panel. Um, they provided very good points in aspects for the history of the property. Um, it is a close-knit community, and um, the, the perfect pictures of the trees, I, 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 I can't speak to that. I was not aware of that at the time when that happened. I'm not sure when that happened. Um, I would like to respond to the, the questions, though, for the adjacent neighbor, which is number 76, asked about specific questions for the addition that we're trying to do on the back. So the addition that we're proposing on the back is actually not a part of our committee of adjustment approval. It is um, passed through the zoning requirements, um, but there was questions if there was a, a window on the wall facing their property line, and that's a no. Um, that there will be all proper drainage and that the, the construction will follow um, the bylaws of the construction bylaw in Toronto. Um, 
in front of the panel is the driveway widening, the, the carport, and I feel like the the reasoning that we presented in the letter made sense. I would also like to address the fact that um, the the son of the homeowners did canvas the neighborhood to try to explain to um, the neighbors, and that's how we got the supportive letters that are in front of the panel tonight. Um, I think that um, there's probably some neighborhood animosity between all of the attached neighbors and the homeowners. And there's a history there in terms of what's been constructed over the years. Um, I find that there's many different levels of construction happening within the neighborhood and years of uh, that to happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's see if we have some questions for you from the panel. Mr. Clay is first. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate uh, that perspective and uh, that, um, you know, the owners have canvassed uh, some of the neighbors, um, but you've got three neighbors almost immediately adjacent who uh, claim that uh, they have had no discussions with your client. Uh, do you have any idea if that's the case? We spoke with, um, I, sorry, I believe that Peter did speak with uh, the adjacent number 76. Um, and we were told that they were worried about the building part. Uh, and I believe that they brought forward those questions in the um, presentation about the window and privacy. Um, but we were not told of any other objections from that. We tried to talk with Margo, number 82, and um, the discussion was not open. Okay, my, my question for you um, is well illustrated by the photograph that we have up on the up on the screen at this moment. So it is the driveway and the related this is the and, and the directly related soft landscaping deficiency. So there we have a driveway that is double width and we have a soft landscaping deficiency that is serious. Um, so um, rather than try to legalize this condition, why is the applicant not um, considering um, mitigating it by, by uh, pulling up the asphalt and replacing it with soft landscaping? Right, I don't, I think they believe that they would want to try this route um, first. Other questions, Mr. Byatt? Mr. Byatt, we can't hear you. Apologies again. Um, I was just looking at uh, uh, Google Street Map and going back to try and see when this uh, driver was uh, widened, and it looks as though it was around 2013. <clears throat> pardon me, that the driveway was um, widened and it's around that time as well that the carport was established. So there's a little bit of a, a, a background to that uh, up in terms of timeline. Um, the question I have also is with regard to uh, uh, variance number two, um, this refers to presumably an entrance way on the side of the house. Is, is there was there a door created on the side of the house that uh, enters the carport and is that the reference to vehicle entrance in the main wall no they're talking about the actual opening of the carport as you look at the front of the house oh okay as like the, as the car would like drive in through that opening so it, it says it creates is... a garage door it's it's actually just like an opening in the wall and they're talking about the um driveway slopes down towards okay. that entrance and that's what the bylaw number is referenced to okay good thank you thank you further questions for the applicant panel before we go into committee 
I'm not hearing any. Okay. In that case, then, let's take the application. And Mr. Nipple, are you w with the question? No. When, when, we're in, when we're in committee, I have some comments. We're, we're going into committee now. So we're in, in committee now. Go ahead, Mr. Nipple. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have some serious difficulty with this application. Um, as, as Larry indicated, we have three people who are um, very seriously uh, opposed to this application, and it seems to me with good reason. Um, two of them are on either side of the site, the application site. I have some difficulty um, accepting the, the comment that they were consulted because particularly number 76 raised questions that presumably would have been answered during any consultation that might have taken place. So I'm, I'm of the belief that there really wasn't adequate consultation, which is the reason why this meeting is going on so long and why we're wasting time here, in my view. I have no difficulties at all uh, in um, uh, refusing variances number three and four. I don't think there is any possible uh, reason to support variances three and four. The driveway is grossly over wide um, and it has huge implications for the landscaping. I, um, I'm unable to support the application as it currently exists. I would be inclined to perhaps support it, but with the exception of three and four, which I can't support. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bayek, go ahead. Um, I'd just like to echo uh, what um, Mr. Nepal has said. It's uh, variances number three and four. I can't support those either. Okay, and no, nor can I. Um, how about the rest of it? Um, should we, is, the, is the entire application worthy of approval minus those two, or is the entire application worthy of refusal? That's, I think, the question that we're facing. Uh, so, personally, so, I don't. I don't have any real uh, problems with the carport. Um, okay. You know, you know, it's 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 not an uncommon feature of many houses. I I I, I share my colleagues' concerns about um, the width of the driveway and its related impact on um, the deficiency in landscaping. I it, it seems to me that you know if if the applicant is um, you know, undertaking a construction project in the rear um, and needs approval for this portion of uh, or uh, of their uh, property that, you know, an effort uh, could have been made to maybe uh, address it in a different way. I, it just seems to me the applicants just kind of thrown up their hands and said, well, it's already there, so we're not going to do anything about it. It seems to me that there is an opportunity to uh, demonstrate to us or um, the neighbors that they're um, trying to uh, redress uh, this situation. So uh, I I would agree with my colleagues. I I on uh, I, I on item three and four. Who's ready with the motion? Mr. Byatt, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Nepho. Can go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Nepho. Um. Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, move approval of the application, but with the exception of three and four being refused, um, and with a condition that the south edge of the deck is to be screened. The reason for that is the uh, next door neighbor has privacy concerns. I think they're valid, and there is no screening provided. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? It is seconded, Mr. Byatt. Moved and seconded to approve the application with the exclusion of minor, minor variances three and four. Sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I believe there might also be urban forestry. Number two, that's oh, correct. I yes. apologize, I'm sorry. Forestry yeah, not a problem. Yeah. That's my mistake, sorry. Sure, no problem. Okay. Very good. Those in favor of the motion, show of hands, please. Mr. Clay, we have lost you temporarily, but we do have quorum, and uh, that oh. vote is unanimous, so three votes. I um, see. I, I see Larry. Yeah, I'm. I'm here. Yep. I, I, <laughs> uh, and uh, may, may I ask, did you vote uh, 
Did you vote to support the motion? I, I did, yes. Okay. So that. thank you very much, Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer. So um, there are four votes, unanimous vote to carry the motion. The application is approved, but with those minor variances removed. And that concludes today's uh, agenda. It is now 7.07 p.m. And um, the, the hearing, therefore, can, uh, can now be terminated. I want to thank the members of the panel for their seriousness of purpose, their preparation, and their focus to the last minute, as always. I also want to thank staff for the preparation that was done to make this happen and for um, their flawless technical support during the carrying out of the hearing today. So thank you to all of those people for- Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you panel members, as well as to John and Sarah. Have a good evening, everyone. Good thank evening you to you all. Very much. Yeah, thanks, Sabrina. Thanks, staff. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Cheers.